for the rare privilege of being alive and of course the opportunity of having another conversation around the top stories making the rounds here in our dear republic. I'll let you into my panel for the morning's conversation shortly. I know they've all taken their bath. Yeah, they've all, everybody here is taking their bath. Whether well, I was done uh, airborne on land or on sea, doesn't really matter. And um, they obviously know that if they want security, they must make their way to heaven. Let's take a look at the front pages of our newspapers. Daily graphic. Snate adopts Ghana card. ID changeover from June 28 to December 31. Please on alert of our bandits. Printers call for tax waiver on materials. The Netherlands ambassador comments graphic. Ghanaian Times. Agenda 111. Where 111 projects work on 35 hospitals starts next month in fulfillment of the president's promise last year. Ravaging tidal waves in Ketu South. Blekusu Sea Defense Project 2 to begin by end of the year. Parliament approves first batch of deputy ministerial nominees. 9.9 .9 million workers without insurance and pension, Labour Minister. Daily Guide. Appeals Court bounces Opuni and Agongo. 12 deputy ministers approved. Agrada convicted. Fined 36,000 Ghana cities. Ghana forces request new presidential aircraft. Baumi and Vils could force at collections. The New Crusading Guide. 11 deputy ministers approved by parliament with a minister of state. Implement procedures to audit IT systems. Dr. Ntribu Isiaku to auditors. Doma East MP Lord's government who are moves to revive TOR. Lance minister commends Ghanaians for promoting Green Ghana project. Court orders joined of Befi Hagan and Co. in Lance Commission case. <coughs> the insight. <coughs> Martin Amidu punches Ekufadu again as he exposes hidden secrets behind family and friends. A Japa Kabuki dance. Which dance is that? Kabuki dance. Kabuki sounds like an Ada female name. Eh? With special prosecutor in parliament. <coughs> Bomasi residents suffering. So the picture you see there is the water that the residents use for the domestic purposes. Bomasi Sikesua. Police intel says Ghana faces imminent attacks by terrorists. Ekufuado's luxurious jet saga. A black blast defense minister. The Daily Statesman. Kumasi Daylight Robbers arrested. Lance Minister comments Ghanaians on Green Ghana project. NDC neglected Mills' Asundre Park. Kukwanyido laments. Upon Kruma, broadcast infractions to be tackled. Daily Post. Ekufado can't even shower in presidential jet. Nitiwo defense president's alleged extravagant foreign travels. Too much stress killing fathers in Ghana. Dr. Dobache. Bullion Van Heist. Escalating insecurity must be confronted head on. Ablakwa. But Ablakwa, you know that if you want uh, absolute security, you must make your way to heaven. Mm. Nowhere cool. Business and Financial Times. Economy grows 3.1% despite pandemic. SNIT, NIA, integration takes off in two weeks. Let's deal with piracy like Galamse, GMA Director General. Inconsistent data denting tourism sector gains. Same re registration to benefit remittances. Communications Ministry. Fishing close season begins from July 1 to August 31. The technical, vocational education and training, that's TVET career upgrades, and government six partnerships to revive TOR. So that's about it for the front pages. We'll be back shortly.
in Ghana and in Africa, there is only one place to look to get that luxurious design and decor for your offices and homes. Visit Jamila Home. We give you the climax of luxury wherever you find yourself. Presidential and executive office furniture, living room sets, dining sets, stunning mirrors, adorable wallpapers, lovely king and queen size beds, valuable antiques and antique goods, beautiful chandeliers and more. Into the bargain, we provide caring customer service, prompt delivery service, skilled and artistic full house design and decor services, and free decor ideas for your space. Our products and service is unparalleled, boasting of top tier clients all over the globe. Jamila Home, home of first class quality furniture, beautiful chandeliers, and antiques. The average human body mass should have at least 60% water for optimal performance in any physical or mental exercise. We can help you maintain it naturally. Natural mineral water. Simply natural. Blood gives life. Blood is very important. Let's donate blood to save lives. On Saturday, June 19th, 2021, Metro TV, Original TV, and Original FM humbly invite you to be part of blood donation exercise at the premises of Metro TV, close to Alisa Hotel on Dr. Isert Street at Northridge in Accra. The exercise will start at 7 o'clock in the morning. It is in commemoration of the World Blood Donation Day. Join us Save Lives as we donate blood for the blood bank. This exercise is in partnership with Blue Skies, Pharma Nova, manufacturers of 3 First Serum, number one builder of blood cells. There's a place for people like you. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana, live on Metro TV, brought to you in kind partnership with X Natural Mineral Water. With me on the show this morning, two gentlemen, very well dressed, and it's pretty obvious that they've taken their shower this morning. Felix Kwachiofusu is the former Deputy Minister of Communications. And Abdul Malik Kweku Baku is the editor in chief at large of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Good morning. Morning, Ma. <coughs> so I guess that um, one of the controversies, and incidentally, mm -hmm. both of you have been on the program the last three weeks uh, mm -hmm. discussing this issue that was raised by. Um, the ranking member on foreign affairs, Honorable uh, Kujetua Blakwa. And it's about um, the state of the jet and, of course, the president's uh, hiring of uh, that particular aircraft that generated a lot of controversy in this country. The Minister of Defense was in Parliament yesterday to answer the agent's question. I'd like us to watch what transpired in Parliament yesterday so that we can get a full grasp of what <coughs> actually said. And then I'll take your views on, on that. In an urgent question in Parliament from the North Town MP, 
The Defense Minister, Dominic Nitiwo, said the current presidential aircraft cannot be relied on for long-distance travels. The choice to travel by road, by air, or by sea is a national security imperative. And I have reason to release the aircraft, this particular aircraft, to other VVIPs, including ex-presidents, to carry out national duties. VVIP or presidential travel is not about aircraft type. It is not even about cost, but it's all about safety, safety and safety of the aircraft crew and the passengers. Among other safety concerns, he further stressed that the presidential jet has no washroom facilities. He will need more than just a falcon. Otherwise, the people would have to go a day ahead of the president to prepare themselves. The president, in fact, has to go a day ahead because no president can shower in this aircraft. You cannot freshen up in this aircraft. So you cannot move from this aircraft straight into a meeting. If you are using a commercial plane, Mr. Speaker, it's the same thing. If you are going and you stop by Emirates, the Dubai government will have to give you courtesies. When you are going to the United, to the United Kingdom, the United Kingdom government will have to give you courtesies that are not necessary. But the response drew a sharp criticism from the minority side. Other people. Wouldn't we be saving money if you advise the president to acquire a new aircraft instead of this expensive 15,000 pounds an hour arrangement? Clearly, this cannot be sustainable. The finance minister, Ken Oforiata, is scheduled to appear before the House on Thursday, June 17, to provide details of the cost of the nine day official trip by the president. We, as a minority, are not impressed one bit by the answers the defense minister provided. The question was simple. What is the state of the presidential jet, the Falcon 900 EXE? And is it airworthy? That is the simple urgent question. Look at how we are struggling even to get vaccines today for, for, for the people to protect the people from COVID. And then we blow 2.8 million cities for just 23 hours. And that is the minimum amount. And you will hear tomorrow from the finance minister that this is even a conservative estimate if they will be honest and candid with the people of this country and with this house. So ladies and gentlemen, we are not happy with the defense minister's responses. We are going to continue to pursue this matter to its logical conclusion. Ultimately, we want to stop the president from engaging in this profligate, ostentatious, extravagant means of travel. Because as we pointed out, from that same company, Acropolis if, if Aviation, which is based in Farnborough, UK, where this uh, ACJ 320 new was chartered, they have in their fleet other jets that could have been leased. So why go for this? The, the world's most, if you go on, you can Google, just Google ACJ 320 new. It's there as the world's most luxurious, the most expensive aircraft that the world has ever seen. And a poor country, rich nations are not going for that jet. And we, a poor country, we are going for that jet. What, I, mean, I mean, what is wrong with us? And go, you didn't need to go and beg. And we say we just want to shower in the sky. What is so special about showering in the sky? Right, so that's what transpired in Parliament um, yesterday. But, uh, gentlemen, I'm sure that both of you have the full statement sure. uh, from the uh, Defence Minister. And, of course, uh, you've also watched the response of the ranking member on foreign affairs. Um, Felix, well, the Defence Minister was asked the question. He has responded. <laughs> Shouldn't it end there? Nani, to be honest with you, um, the facts of the matter as put out by my brother Samuel Kujetua Blakwa some three weeks ago were quite, quite straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I did not look forward to any convincing answer from the defense minister <laughs> because the facts were known even before the defense minister came. But I certainly did not expect some of the answers that the minister put out. I mean the bit about 
uh, no president being able to shower in our falcon and all that was completely unnecessary. It, 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 it's important that public officials watch what they see. <coughs> in these times, you cannot reject an image of a president that is looking for creature comforts to rub salt in the injuries of Ghanaians who are smarting under severe economic hardships. So even as I did not look forward to any convincing answer, the answer that the minister gave fell below expectation, completely out of touch. Indeed, I have read his statement several times. I was also listening to him. Now, if you read the statement carefully, I think there are three things that one can glean. The first one is that he tries to make excuses for the resort to other measures because he says the Falcom does not have sufficient reach. The other issue that he raises is that it is quite small and so can accommodate only a very limited number of people. And then the third one, he basically puts in a request for the purchase of what he considers to be a bigger, more suitable aircraft. So these are the three things that I gleaned. And I'm sure that anybody who has read the statement would agree with me. Now, I would address these matters and show why they do not respond to the question that my brother raised. What was the issue that my brother raised? He said that information available to him, and it is indeed important to state from the outset that the minister did not dispute the facts as put out by the Honorable Samokje to Ablakwa. And the facts were that in order for the president to travel sometime in the middle of May, between 16th and 25th May, this government, the Akufa, <coughs> okay. so just, yeah. just for, for the purposes of our viewers sure. and everybody, mm -hmm. this is the question okay. that was admitted mm -hmm. and put to the minister. Sure. There were two questions. One was, one was to the finance minister. Mm -hmm. That one has not been dealt with. Sure. That had to do with, uh, the, the to ask the finance minister how much the president's recent official travels to France, Belgium, and South Africa in May this year caused the Ghanaian taxpayer. So for the defense minister, the question was, to ask the Minister for Defense whether the presidential jet is in good condition and considered airworthy. This sure. was the question. Those are the questions. Yes. But that question evolved from the information that he had put out three weeks ago. And that information was to the effect that in order for the president to go for, <coughs> I beg your pardon, for some recent meetings in three countries between 16th and 25th May, the Akufado Baumia government chartered an aircraft, ACJ 320 New. And the Honorable Samuel Zablakwa put out information regarding the state of that aircraft. His contention was that given the cost implication, this was excessive, it was extravagant, and it was ostentatious. He also argued that there were more affordable alternatives, including the existence of a presidential jet, or even if that was not readily available, alternative commercial arrangements could have been made that would have cost the taxpayers less. This is the government and substance of the issue that he presented. And what he said can be borne out by the circumstance of this country. Randy, only yesterday, the Saskatchewan Service put out information about the performance of this economy. They showed that in order for the Akufado Baumia government to meet its commit commitments on just two items, interest payments and payment of salaries, it had to borrow and exceed, exceed its revenue by 3 billion Ghana cities. So in other words, even the, the money that we have now as a country is not sufficient to pay for interest on our debts and public sector salaries, which are just two items. We've not even spoken about investments, capital investment, what have you. Just two items. You don't have the means to meet it in the first quarter of this year. The budget that this government itself has presented shows that we are in very serious economic difficulties. Compelling the government to impose taxes that have imposed severe hardships on the people. And we have, we have not stopped lamenting and crying. The parlous state of the economy. Only last week, transport fares went up 13% as a result of increases in fuel prices. There is speculation that the next pricing window, which will be any moment from now, would ensure an upward adjustment in fuel prices. This is an indication that things are not rosy and that we are facing very serious economic times. So even as we face these times, leaders have a responsibility to spend our monies judiciously and in a prudent fashion. That reflects the realities of the people. 
This is a position that I'm not sure anybody can argue against. But what the president did in the hiring of this aircraft is at complete variance with what he is asking Ghanaians to do and the measures that he has had to take and the situation that we find ourselves in as Ghanaians. Now, the answer that we expected was that they will be able to show that what the Honorable Samuel Black said was not true. As of now, at least from the perspective of the Defense Minister, he does not dispute the facts as put out. Today, we expect that the uh, Finance Minister will be able to shed light on the financial implications. Indeed, you would agree with me, and anybody who will be honest would agree, that even the monies or the amounts that the Honorable Okujeto Ablaqua put out are very conservative because he only calculated the flight time of the aircraft. And you and I know that when you rent an aircraft, you don't get billed for only the flight time. For as long as it is within your custody, you pay for the duration based on the negotiated price. Now, what are the excuses that Honorable Dominic Mitchell is making? He says that this, our presidential jet, is not fit for purpose because its range is not far enough and that its seating capacity too is not sufficient. So I will address these two. Randy, in 2007, 2008, I believe, after a back and forth, the huge controversy, President Kofor stood his ground and ordered two aircraft. It, one of them was a business jet, I believe a Boeing business jet, and the other one was this Falcon, 900 EX Easy. That is the official name. Now, we argued in opposition that that was excessive expenditure. That was not required at the time because put together, they were going to cost in excess of $100 million. I think it was $105 million. The Falcon was around $40 million and the Boeing business jet was around $65 million or so. Pursuant to that position, we insisted that when we came to power, we were going to review this agreement. Indeed, when President Mills took over, he said that he would keep the Falcon 900 EX easy and forgo the Boeing business jet because it was essentially a presidential jet. We didn't need two presidential jets at the time. One was sufficient. Now, if you go to the website of Dassault, which is a French company that manufactures this Falcon EX easy, and anybody listening to me can go there. They give specifications about this aircraft. Indeed, if you look at the specification regarding range, that is how far this aircraft can travel, they have the following to see. The Falcon 900 EX can fly a long range mission, long range mission, emphasis mine, long range mission of 4,940 miles, which is equivalent to almost 8,000 kilometers or up to 9.4 hours, almost nine and a half hours non-stop. This aircraft can go, nine and a half hours. Now, they say it can cruise at altitudes as high as 51,000 feet. Now, if you come to another paragraph, they say, and indeed, in terms of the specifications of this aircraft, there is no bigger authority than those who manufactured it. Nobody has more capacity and expertise on the aircraft than those who did it. Now, they also say that no matter how you look at it, the Dassault Falcon 900X EX is an impressive private jet with ranges of over 5,000 miles. That is, its maximum distance can actually exceed 5,000 miles. An incredibly comfortable cabin. Indeed, I saw your producers show the inside of the Dassault because the impression is created that it is some ramshackle, dilapidated, medieval contraption. It is a modern aircraft. The insides are very comfortable. I've had the privilege to sit in that aircraft before. And I can tell you, Andy, it is not chicken change. It is a comfortable aircraft for a president of a nation like ours, if he is minded to use it. Now, an innovative three-engine configuration for overwater safety and fighter jet design strength. It is ideal for transoceanic and transcontinental trips and offers great versatility in flight planning. Randy, what are the transoceanic and transcontinental flights? Africa to Europe, some parts of the Middle East, the African continent, and even some parts of the United States of America. Because indeed, it is on record that this plane has gone to the US before, which is <coughs> a, further distance, New York, New York. a further distance from here to France. Indeed, Randy, in 2015, I was with President Mama on this aircraft to France. To France. Indeed, incidentally, one of the meetings we held 
was with Dassault on another matter. The company that manufactured this aircraft. Again, if you have an aircraft that can clock nine and a half hours non-stop, can do over 5,000 miles, which is equivalent to over 8,000 kilometers, and you are going to France, whose distance from Accra is 4,828 kilometers, which is roughly half of the distance that this aircraft can cover. On what basis do you tell me that it has not got the requisite range? So that was not the only only trip. No, no. Because the, if the president flew from Randy, I'll France address that. to South Africa. I'll address that. Yeah. Randy, the distance from Accra to Johannesburg is 4,600 kilometers. Yes. So if the argument is that the president must leave France and go to Johannesburg, all that he needed to do was to come to Accra, stop for about an hour or two, and continue to Johannesburg. That's all. Indeed, he would have time to freshen up if he is minded to eat some local food, he can do it, rest, have meetings in between, and jet off to South Africa. Because at the moment, this is the aircraft that we have. And I don't think anything will be lost if the president stopped over in Accra for one hour on, on route to South Africa. So the distance involved could have been covered by this aircraft. But, but this is just one of the issues you mm -hmm. raised. The yes, issue I'm coming. Yes, because the, mm -hmm. the defense minister also raises the issue of uh, entourage size. Andy, I'm coming to address that. First of all, <coughs> if you look at the ACJ 300 new, the defense minister admits that it sees 19 people. Indeed, at night, what they call the sleep time, it must see 17 people because the weight must be adjusted. I thought he was rather talking about 11 and with cargo. I'm talking eight. about the I'm talking I'm talking about the the AC the the jet that yeah, was rented. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. So 17 people at night, mm. or 19 maximum. <coughs> this president, and that's the inside of the Falcon, right? This is what we have. This, this is what we our have. jet. How can anybody say that this is not comfortable? How can anybody? And indeed, beyond this, there's actually a sofa that can sit about three to four people, and then other facilities. Mm. It has a decent washroom. It has a decent washroom. The pictures of the washroom are available. Anybody can access it on the internet. And indeed, this is very, very similar to what we have on the Falcon, at least at the last time that I sat in it. And mind you, in 2018 or so, we went for refurbishment. Mm. So I can imagine that they even did something about the insides too. Mm. Now, Randy, in terms of the passenger capacity, what is the substantial difference between a jet that can seat 17 or 90 people and 11 people? That warrants this excessive expenditure on a jet that can charge up to 15,000 pounds an hour. So we are not talking about a difference of our 30 people. Our jet can seat 11 people with four crew. This one can seat 17 people. So just six people who cannot get on board of this our presidential aircraft, aircraft cannot warrant the resort to a very expensive option. And indeed, Randy, all, all presidents before President Kufad who have used this Falcon, when the 11 Passenger threshold is exceeded. Everybody else goes commercial. Sometimes, as well for you and General Assembly meetings, the numbers are huge, over 100. Sometimes the president actually joins the commercial flight too, <coughs> depending on the circumstance. So both reasons cannot justify this expense. I don't see what difference four or five additional members of the entourage makes to warrant this sort of expenditure. What is clear is that our president preferred a certain level of opulence and ostentation because the excuses that are, are being given are not tenable. And then, Randy, I told you last week or the, the other time that I came here that the aviation industry is one of the most transparent. Anybody watching me can check where our presidential jet has been to in the last three months. Indeed, the tail number or registration number is 9G <coughs> stroke, sorry, 9G dash EXE. If you type that into any flight radar application today, it will tell you where it has been. And this craft has been doing distances that are comparable to the distance between Accra and Johannesburg and Accra in France. Some say the President Kufad went for Yuri Museveni's inauguration. He used the presidential aircraft. That distance is almost like from here to South Africa. So it can go. And I have told you, I have sat on this presidential aircraft to France from Accra before. So it can go to France, it can go to the United States, it can go to the United Kingdom, it can go to Some Germany. Some parts of the United States. Yes. Yeah. Non-stop. Absolutely. Non-stop. Mm. Nine and a half hours non-stop. 
So the, the, the defense minister's excuse with distance and size, at least in relation to this specific trip to France, Belgium, and indeed we are told that the president hopped onto a train from France to Belgium. That's what I heard the defense minister say yesterday, which is about a distance of one hour, I believe. <coughs> so what imperative compelled the hiring of this lavish and expensive jet? Look, we have to cut our, uh, our coat according to the size of our cloth. There are countries that have money, but they don't behave the way we are behaving. Randy, China. China is the second richest country in the world. They have, their economy is worth trillions. But they don't have a standing presidential jet. You know, Air China has two Boeing aircrafts, jumbo jets that they use for commercial flights. When the Chinese president wants to travel, they just commandeer one. He sits in it and he goes. So it is not configured. So that's a state owned airline. Yeah, it's a state owned airline. Yeah. But they've not bought, they can say that, well, let the state airline run. He uses a passenger jet. It's not an executive jet. I'm sure he's either sits in first class or business class with his entourage. The same for Taiwan. Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a wealthier country than Ghana. You should go to Ethiopia and see the level of development there. They have a state airline. The president has not acquired a presidential jet. When he wants to travel, they just give one of the aircrafts, which he uses. But we don't have a state airline. No? Yes, we don't. Mm. But that's another conversation altogether. So if the United States of America, Germany, look, the, the aircraft that Angela Merkel uses, they used to belong to Lufthansa. They just co-opted two, and that's what she uses. So we cannot afford a situation where the president of a poor country like ours, struggling to meet basic expenses, lives like an Arabian king. And when we require responses, the defense minister gives us this response. <coughs> Indeed, he has come under considerable fire. For okay, maybe we should just put the pictures of the two aircraft together. Exactly. The the Falcon and what 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 we rented recently, yeah. and then just mm -hmm. let's just look at both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just go. On. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the responses are not adequate. Now, as for the bet about acquiring a new aircraft, you see, Randy, look in this country. Sometimes we are funny. You recall the debate around the Embraer jet, and you, I recall because in 2010, the then Defense Minister, uh, I think Major General Smith made a presentation to parliament. Indeed, he met government communicators at the time and briefed us on what it entailed. The very claim that Mr. Nitu makes as justification for a bigger aircraft that can carry troops, uh, national footballers, uh, and important delegations, what have you, are the same justifications that General Smith made for the acquisition of the Embraer, which could seat 100 people. But what was the response of the minority at the time? They said the president wanted to buy a presidential aircraft. And, that, and you recall the, the song and the dance they made. They claimed that we were going to buy a, an aircraft guard for $17 million. They said the entertainment system was going to cost a million dollars. And, and made all manner. Similar to what you said about the business jet. Absolutely. Okay. So the point I'm making. <laughs> oh, but why? It's not the first time. Randy, no, I'm why? Asking, I, 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 Randy. I'm only asking for clarity. No, Randy, <laughs> Randy, what did they also say? Randy, what did, what did Kweku and his friend, uh, friends in the MPP also say about the Gulf Stream 3? Oh, I asked hmm? for clarification. <laughs> Wait, Asam. No problem. Thank you. But I'm also clarifying. Let's move on. That as well, a noise. I, I made a statement. Randy. He was asking me to repeat my Randy. I wanted to hear it well. Randy, he heard it. I missed it. He didn't miss it. He just wanted hey, me to repeat it. You, you want me to increase the volume? Randy, Randy. he wanted you to repeat it for emphasis. But I'm making the point to him yes. that before the oh Boeing business boy. jet was the Gulf Stream 3. Mm -hmm. Indeed, President Kufu said he will not use that aircraft. Wasted mm -hmm. money to make alternative arrangements. And his simple reason was that that thing was tried in secrecy. Mm -hmm. When they came to power, they set up a three-member committee chaired by Mr. Safo Mafu, Mr. J.H. Minsa and Kwame Japan. They found nothing because there was actually nothing beyond the fact that we had gotten money from a bank, I think HSBC or so, which formed a special purpose vehicle, which was not criminal or illegal in order to purchase this aircraft. That is all. Because of this arrangement, President Kufu boycotted the presidential aircraft for four years until it was sold off in 2007, in exchange for, I think, some flight simulators from China or so. Then there was a Fokker 28. You remember that one too, which was labeled a flying coffin. Mm -hmm. And I hear that one was bought by a champ. Yes. So, as for the back and forth about presidential aircraft, it has always been there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. However, the specific circumstance of this is separate from what had happened in the past. In the past, the argument has been about the purchase of an aircraft. Today, we have an aircraft that is fit for purpose. 
which has been slanted aside in favor of an opulent jet that is costing us so this money. is the one that we rented yes. rented yes the acj 320 new yeah. run by acropolis yeah. aviation in the uk so the arguments are not the same anybody seeking to equalize on this basis will be completely wrong <clears throat> if we didn't have an aircraft at all that would be different matter. this is what we have now here's what we have now mm. and i have to believe that because of the spruce up it is looking much better than this mm. yes in 2018 and the president used it for trips around but on this mm -hmm. on this on this particular trip mm -hmm. there were people who traveled commercial yes randy it is not new i had i told yeah, you the last time randy i told you the last time i came here that i have been on a flight that had only economy seats from frankfurt to accra with president mahama the president of ghana sat in an economy class aircraft he didn't his status was not diminished in any way he could also have made made arrangements for a jet mm -hmm. and he said that the presidential jet was not available at the time but he chose we went to ticket in japan yokohama we flew commercial on lufthansa and i'm sure president Kufado has in times past had occasion so, to fly so commercial. let me just understand something is your issue the kind of jet that was hired yes. or mm -hmm. the fact that we hired a jet there are two okay the very fact that we hired a jet and indeed the minister of defense has not shown that the jet was not available or was not fit to fly. True. He agrees that this is in perfect condition. Right. So the fact that we chose to hire a jet when we had one is the first issue. Mm -hmm. Two, even if you were going to hire a jet, mm -hmm. given all the problems we have, all the things that we have had to go through as a country, did you need to hire this top of the range jet? Could not have gone to something similar to what we have, perhaps so that has more capacity. capacity, because that would really be the issue. We so this is the one we hired. Exactly. Yeah. Randy, the facts show that the claim about distance cannot hold mm -hmm. because the president could have gone. The, the aircraft has capacity mm -hmm. to do that long haul flight. So the problems are twofold. The decision to hire a jet and the kind of jet that we hired, which resulted in what we believe to be needless waste of state resources. So for me, these are the issues. Okay. The defense minister's explanation does not cut eyes with me. It does not respond to the issues. All right. We look forward to hear what the finance minister has to say. But I am certain that it will offer, it will not shed any further light on the matter that we have at the moment. All right. Yeah. Ojam, just hold on. I wouldn't want to interrupt you mm -hmm. in the <clears throat> course of your, your um, um, presentation on the issue. So we'll take a break and when we return, we'll, we'll take your views on this matter. <laughs> As a mother and wife, my priority is making sure my family is protected at all times. That is why I never forget to give my angel a floral disposable handkerchief to keep germs and sweat at bay. When Habi is out in the fields, I'm rest assured of flora coming in handy anytime he needs it. Even when my daughter Na is out late, I am confident flora disposable handkerchief will be close enough to save the moment. Flora disposable handkerchiefs are my go-to disposable handkerchiefs any day, anytime, and everywhere. Flora disposable handkerchiefs is affordable and handy. Flora, better than cloth handkerchiefs. Flora is a product of Delta Paper Mill Limited. For inquiries and bulk purchases, call 0243-033-033. What's a first chart system with 2-for-1-1 certification? 90 hertz superfluid display. 6.95 inch full HD plus. MediaTek Helio G95 processor. Unbeatable gaming experience. Infinix Note 10 Pro. 
faster and smoother. Yeni mo yeni msa upe football pa. Anunti na high sense as sponsor Euro 2020. Edia maono. Ne sa sunti na yate te TV su se who edia maono. A high sense Hero 2020 TV Super Promo. Can we get your brand new high sense TV? I need board that for. Pictures need a clear, na color need a deep. Sound quality this one dear. One inch here. High sense TV so dear. Extra power. A bow down one access you are. I go na I go na uti usa a barefoot. Every day 18th June. I go film 11th July. A high sense Hero 2020 TV Super Promo. Emma Refuse. High sense and Kwan. Emma five years warranty. Aye. High Sense Hero 2020 TV Super Promo. I cost you a High Sense showroom, sir. I work High Sense. Everyday prices for everyday people. High Sense. Official sponsor at the Hero 2020. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana, live on Metro TV, brought to you in kind partnership with X Natural Mineral uh, Water. Okay, so I've been thinking whether I've ever been on a presidential jet. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I've been on the Fokker 28 mm -hmm. from Accra to Sports. Sports. And indeed, oh, yeah, it's come 2008. Mm -hmm. ah. And in fact, you recall that it was referred, it is not as bad as. It was need to see. Was it wasn't bad. Uh, of course, but, but it with, the, aged. with the things I'm saying, that's of, of course, oh, of, it has aged. Uh -huh. So that one too is an issue. Like a candy show dog, will <laughs> book. Oh, but for internal purposes, <laughs> it's not bad at all. But yeah, let me hear you. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. that little banter mm -hmm. that uh, okay between mm -hmm. Felix and I mm -hmm. a few moments ago uh, was triggered by something he himself said. Mm -hmm. He went into the past mm -hmm. to do a recollection, and then you reminded him that. It's just been a recycling of the same old things with it. And just, I just chipped in there because it's a fact. Oh. And last, uh, two weeks ago, I was on Kwame's program, Kukuku, and I made allusions to that. And indeed ended up more or less agreeing that all of us have been part of the problem relative to that aspect, mm -hmm. not the entirety of the thing. Yes, that, and even it. its use, the yeah. cost. The, cost the, the purchase was not just the problem, mm -hmm. but the cost. Mm -hmm. And within the context of our economic conditions, then, so it's always been linked. Going to purchase a jet, how much is it going to cost? What is the impact on the taxpayer? and the Ghanaian economy. In fact, without the cost, the principle of purchasing will not be relevant. That's right. Yeah. So we've always done <coughs> an argument. Mm. All of us have been part and parcel of that. And I read this particular uh, story. It's, it's a curled from Professor Michael Kui's book. You know, I'm sure you know about that book, Politics in Ghana, yeah. uh, 1972 to 1979. And I would want to read it again for, before I come to tackle the defense minister's thing. It says, in September 1978, a special jet plane, allegedly ordered by General Champon, was delivered in Accra. The said plane had kente, cloth, decorations inside, inside it, um, and among other trappings, had Ghana's coat of arms embossed at the rear. Yeah, it's wooden. There was much public outcry in the wake of which the head of the Ghana Armed Forces Public Relations Directorate said the plane was not a champions. Then, in a second statement the day after, the same person admitted that the plane was in fact ordered by the Ghana Air Force for the use of any president of Ghana. Later on, it was said that the plane was merely one, quote, of a series of planes ordered by the Air Force. But it should have been obvious that Ghana did not need such a plane at a time when there were no drugs, listen, there were no drugs in the hospitals, and it was regrettable that the government was not prepared to go into the full extent of the scandal and decide on how to commercialize the plane and take other measures to show a sense of responsibility. 
that time, the economy was still in tatters. Mm. All these difficulties, hospital beds, all those things were there. We played on the keyboards of people's emotions relative to the purchase, the cost, indeed the context of the state of economy, and indeed virtually indicted a champion. This was one of the things the AFIC, the June Forum, all those rode on to see Ashampong was corrupt, extravagant, and had destroyed the Ghanaian economy. Come back to the Rollins Gulf Stream. Go check the Hansard. Similar arguments, if not same, were made. We are poor, the economy is not working, hospitals don't have drugs, why are you going to buy a plane for the president's use? As if and truly, those planes are not exclusively for the president alone, even though they are known as presidential flight in the Ghana Armed Forces, uh, Ghana Air Force, or if you like, executive jet that has a component for the president. Same thing, Randy. You come back to Falcon and the Airbus, see those on the other side had changed. It's like the Jubilee House construction, same argument. And that's what I mean by we're all part of the problem in terms of doing the debate. And so when he went there, he just quickly hit me. And then interestingly, you chipped in. And that's why I deliberately said, oh, uh, you are that amplification. Isn't that simple? <laughs> I did. I mean, he, yeah, I right. know, I know, of course. Yeah. See, what was the question posed to the Minister of Defense? I'll get it for you. It's here. I, mm. I have it. Whether so the aircraft was fixed. It says that to ask the Minister of Defense whether the presidential jet is in good condition and considered airworthy. Yeah. Yes. Simple. Did the Minister of Defense answer this question or not? He did. He did. Exactly. Ma. He did. He, he agreed that this jet, the Falcon, is serviceable. Mm. It was airworthy. Mm. It's available. And then give reasons why the president did not travel with it. I even thought he shouldn't have gone there. Yes. To be honest with you. Yes. Now, what you've played back, and I didn't watch it, but I have the written Stay answer, sense, yeah. which copies you've given to us too, but I had it last night. Mm. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this written response. Mm -hmm. But apparently, other responses were triggered by supplementary questions. Mm -hmm. Because those things about bathroom and all the rest are not here. Mm -hmm. I don't see them here. Mm -hmm. And usually when you want to do a proper analysis of parliamentary question answer, it is when you, you get the video itself, they do, because they film these things, mm -hmm. and then perhaps it's on the parliamentary website, mm -hmm. but the answer mm -hmm. captures not just the written response, because you see, the nature of the question requires whether you go orally or you come written. Mm -hmm. And a black West agent question required a written response. Mm -hmm. But the minister knew, and everybody who studied this parliamentary procedure knows, that when you come with a written response, subsequent to your answer, there will be supplementary questions allowed by the speaker. Mm -hmm. And then that brings up other details. Mm -hmm. And be honest with you, I have do not, I haven't heard the other details. Why? Because I've read things like, oh, no bathroom, the, the president must shower, or oh, oh, that's not here. It would be useful to find out what kind of question, supplementary question, triggered the minister's response. But I heard uh, Mr. Blackwa, you played him. Mm -hmm. He was talking of 200, 2.8 million and all that. It's needless at this stage. Completely needless. He ought to wait for the finance minister to come to the floor of the house and give answers relative to the financial package. You don't think he was triggered by a part of the defense minister's statement where he made the point that costs is not important, it's yeah, not necessary. That, no, he, he, that one is yes, minister of That is about yeah. safety. I think that's on the last See, no, but Randy, that is not specific to the question of Black has asked the Minister of Finance. Read, read it. No, I'm saying that, would that not be a reaction to the Minister of Finance? It is a defenses? needless reaction. Mm. It is a reaction that reflects what Black has been doing all along anyway. Mm -hmm. 
He didn't even need the Minister of Defense reference to cost of certain things. And not Ministers of Defense answer or the cost element was not an answer to the Black Power question, which well, is tailored for the Minister of Finance. So why, why did he raise that? But that's why I say that yes. for me, I wonder why he even went beyond that. That's my view. But I'm saying he was not answering the expenditure element in the president's travel, was he? He wasn't. No, I'm Read wondering it. why that, why the issue of, why the, the yeah, Randy. emphasis or yeah. the emphasis of, of cost was obviously, part of his answer. Obviously, he would have to answer that question, mm. not me. But I'm saying that if you read this, it is not an answer to what Abraqa was demanding. So there's no need for Abraqa coming to talk about 2.8 million. Well, when he knows the Minister of Finance is due to appear in Parliament today to deal with it. Well, what I was just trying to bring to your attention yeah. was that couldn't a Black West reference to the 2.8 be as a result of the Minister of Defense straying into the area of cost when that was not the question asked him? Yeah, but the Minister of Defense reference to cost element mm -hmm. had no, ref uh, re it was not an answer to a Black West question. Mm -hmm. You see, you see, Randy, perhaps we better start from beginning. Yes. See, you know the original question Ablapa asked, which was not admitted. I'm sure you know that question. Yes. Listen to it. He says, to ask the minister responsible for defense, why President Nanadu Adodankwa Kufuadu did not use the presidential jet, that's the Falcon 9GX, on his recent official travels to France, Belgium, and South Africa. Mm. and to make full disclosure on how much the alternative travel arrangements cost the Ghanaian taxpayer. This question was not admitted because it didn't meet the parliamentary procedures. And I can read to you what the clerk advised the speaker was, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So he says, right honorable speaker may decline admission to the questions having regard to order 62.1 mm. on the basis of the following. The Minister of Defense is not responsible for determining the uh, president's means of transport. Okay? Two, Minister for Defense is not responsible for the payments of the air travel expenses of the president. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, he mentioned names and things in the question, which are all outside parliamentary procedure. So this was not admitted. Then he comes back with this question, which is straightforward and was admitted. To ask the Minister for Defense whether the presidential jet that sold Falcon 9 EG is in good condition and considered airworthy. This question has been answered. Mm -hmm. In the affirmative. Yes. So the next question, which I think will bring the that is where the meat is. Mm -hmm. Is that's today. Today. Mm -hmm is to ask the Minister for Finance how much the President's recent official travels to France, Belgium, and South Africa in May this year cost the Ghanaian tax a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. That's where the question, the meat is. If this comes, then we can interrogate this whole point about opulence, extravagance, and all the rest. The figures you pick from the net, for all you know, may not be the exact figures that were paid by Ghana government. So why rush? Mm. You are still talking of 2.8, which is your calculations, mm -hmm. based on figures you picked from the night. I say it is so irresponsible, mm -hmm. parliamentary practice. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay? You don't do that. Mm -hmm. So that's the point. I'm waiting for the Minister of Finance to come to Parliament, give us figures. Then, so, yeah. so, then we... Okay. Come so on. staying on the Defence Minister's yeah. response... There are issues, so now the question of I'm looking for that the question of it being serviceable, therefore being fit for use mm. has been answered. Yes. Okay. Now so what it means is that at the time the president traveled, the Falcon was in use. Yes. Okay. So the defense minister goes on to give reasons. Yes. Why although the Falcon was in use number of passengers the, minute, the president had to Yes. Use another aircraft. Yes. So he talks about the number of passengers that this can take against that. Exactly. And then, um, okay, there's a lesser the issue of luggage. Then the range. Yes. And all that. Yes. Felix, listening to him, also makes the point yeah. that, for example, 
if you want to argue about the France to Johannesburg leg, mm. obviously the Falcon will have to make a stopover. Yes, but the he of defense said so. Yeah, too. but but he makes the point yeah. that indeed, if you were minded to use the Falcon, yes, you could make one stopover and then go on your journey. And he doesn't think that the issue of a stopover must warrant the extra cost of charging, of, of hiring the kind of jet that we hired. He's entitled to make that judgment. That's his opinion. He's not the one who decides for the president how to travel. He's not, but he's entitled to it. This is a democracy. So, so he has an opinion on how his money is I used. have no difficulty with that. Okay. And that is why I'm saying that at bottom line, mm. the Minister of Finances address or answers may throw more light. And it is within that context that one may be able to now say, oh, this is, was too opulent or this was too extravagant. Yes, but as we, we sit here, mm. we are using figures somebody picked. Indicative figures. Indicative figures yeah. that somebody picked. And he's inviting us to write on that figures, those figures. Mm. I say it's unfair. Mm. Then don't ask the question. Mm. Proceed outside parliament and do whatever you want to do. Mm. Okay? See, Randy, all this and the, the point about a new jet. See, you see, going back, I think it was an error of judgment on the part of the Mills administration when they decided to cancel the uh, business jet. Airba yes, the Airbus. But that was done based on this same thing about playing on keyboards of people's emotions, mm. using the economic hardships as the basis. That was what was done. So in the short term, it made the government look good. This is a government that wanted to be careful, wanted to protect the pe public purse and things. How many years later? Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the armed forces, in re the Ghana Air Force, in requesting for the two aircraft, they, they requested for two. The Boeing business jet, BBJ, that is a ACJ319ER. To be honest with you, I don't even understand what some of these things mean. But this is a, the request that the Ghana, Armed Force, uh, Ghana Air Force made. It was signed by J.O. Boatin, Chief of Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal. It's dated 24 December 2007. And in terms of the range, it says, uh, see, from table one, they had a table here. This Falcon, the capacity is 12, the one we are discussing. This is what they put here, 12. The Boeing business jet was 30 plus. That's what is here. Now it says from table one, the Boeing business jet, Airbus corporate, ah, okay, that's what it means, Airbus corporate jet. And the Airbus corporate jet uh, 318 Elite meet Ghana Air Force set criteria for the main executive aircraft. Wide body, medium to long range aircraft. That is the one we discarded. Mm -hmm. Then this one, Falcon 900 EX Easy and the Global Express on the other hand, satisfy the requirements for a mid-size long range aircraft okay so in terms of range both are okay yes but in terms of capacity for passengers the business jet takes more yes yeah. no but well it says mid mid size long range aircraft yeah mid size is there yeah the, and this one is yeah. wide body medium yes. uh -huh. so bigger yes. capacity okay yeah. now the minister talks about also the norm mm -hmm. of people who would may be in the delegation mm -hmm. If the number is more than 20, uh, more 12, than 12, yes. obviously, they will have to go commercial. Yes. He made that point here. Yes. Or if we had a, an extra, assuming we had the Airbus, yes. if 20, they could all go in the Airbus. Yes. So there are reasons why sometimes we incur certain cost. And it is not peculiar to the Akufado presidency. Previous administrations, whereas even having presidential jets at their disposal, Traveling with numbers ranging from 50 to 80 or so, whilst the president is in the official jet, presidential jet, there are other citizens, part of his staff, mm. security, mm. party officials, mm. who, and other government functionaries who go in commer commercial jets. The difference, uh -huh. the difference uh -huh. with the situations you describe and now is that that, will, that has never been a reason why we go and charter presidential jets. I don't get your drift. Okay. So, a reason the defense minister gives is that because of the size of a president's entourage, 
So the falcon was not fit for purpose. And so we had to go for this one. See, I would be surprised if the falcon did not go along. I'm not, I'm, that's not even, it's, a, it's another uh, question. I'm, I'm just saying because that. Because there were staff. Because there are things that I, I'm minded by security and all. The point I'm trying to make is that the past examples that you give, mm. anytime a president's entourage is more than the capacity of the jet, what is done is that all those who don't travel on the jet go commercial. Yes, and what is the cost? For me, it's the cost no, no, I was just, looking just, at. Just, just a minute. Yeah. So it is, it is different from when we are told that because of that reason, the size of the entourage being more than the capacity of the Falcon, so we've gone to higher Yeah, yeah but was agents. that the only reason? No, I'm saying it's one of the reasons uh -huh. that the defense minister gave. It's, it's yes. one, but not one the only. Yes, yeah, so one if reasons. a combination of reasons can trigger the decision to go for uh, the one we went for, the mm. commercial one, mm. whilst the Falcon 2 was in use. Mm. Eh? You'll be surprised, really, are you asking, because that question was not asked. Yes. And I don't know if there are supplementary questions. <laughs> it didn't come up. How do you whether know? The did you watch the video? Have you watched yes. it? Yes. Whether the Falcon no. was in France. Where, yes. Randy, that did you watch? It. No, I'm not saying that. No, Randy, did you watch? I know. Because I didn't watch. Okay. I know that the Falcon was in France. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that's the point I'm making. So was it there for what? What was it there for? Perhaps Part of the people who were. Yes. And in fact. Yes. And in fact. It, 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 it appears that it went ahead of the president. You see? But I say that. Yeah, but I say nothing wrong with that. But I do not, what I yeah. do not know is whether it went to South Africa. Yes, but I say nothing wrong with that. Dependent on the numbers available, the kind of mission they were going to uh, uh, undertake. Mm -hmm. And so we have to first find out even who were those, perhaps using the Falcon. Ministers, security personnel, or what? And what mission? Because some, you know there's always an advanced team. Yes in all these yes. matters. Uh -huh. yes. So I would even have a problem with that. But you see, unfortunately, that was not part of the question unless the supplementary and questions brought, brought it up, okay. which we are at this stage. We don't know. We don't know. Mm. No. Is it Randy? Yes. You see, Mr. Bakun has attempted to seek solace mm -hmm. in brevity and limitations imposed by the specific question that was asked. In other words, he says that not he believes that Mr. Nitiwo should have stuck with the specific, is the Falcon airworthy? And you respond to a question that you asked. It is true, but you uh, see, if you stray, you are you no, might no, no, yes, I, I will yourself. address that. I will yeah. address that. Mr. Nitowo could not have pretended not to have been aware of the huge public interest in the matter being discussed. And indeed, because he essentially is the custodian of the presidential travel fleet, he is seized with knowledge that many people do not have. In, the finance minister may only be able to give you figures in terms of cost bring this much for us to be care on this travel. But in terms of the specific details, movements and all that, the, finance, the defense minister is seized with that information because that information is necessary for the aircraft to be deployed. So he cannot go to parliament and pretend that he has not heard if about the... Let's not have yeah. parliament. No, 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 I agree. Felix, see, if you were the comms advisor of course, to the minister of defense and he's been asked this question, Randy, would you advise him to stray beyond answering the question? Randy, even though he knows... Randy, I'm saying that. And parliamentary procedure no, no, doesn't no, 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 allow no, no. that. Randy, best practice, the need for transparency and accountability. Then change the standing orders. I beg your pardon. Require, and, but what he did did not flout the standing order. I'm sure the speaker no, would not have allowed him. He wouldn't him. have, an, if he, he did. Yeah, I'm sure the speaker would not have allowed him uh -huh. if he had acted in any way that violated the standing order. So he did not flout the standing order as no, far as we know. So. As far as we know. Mm. Yeah. The second point that I disagree with hiding behind brevity in a matter of huge public interest like this. So he sought to explain why what happened, happened. And I think that it is proper. As to whether or not the explanation makes sense or it addresses the question, it's another matter. Yeah. I do not think that his explanation addressed the question. And I will say, I will show why. In the, the question if, asked, you mean? Yes. No, no, no. All, you see, again, Randy. That's the issue, problem we have here. No, no, no. You see, I'm saying that I disagree with that notion that you must hide behind brevity <laughs> and stick strictly to the question. So, in other words, hey. he needed just one line. The, for, uh, the Falcon, the uh, 900 EX is airworthy and yes. can go to France. Yes. I'm saying that if he did that, yes. he would have gone against a key tenant of governance. Which that is, is transparency and accountability. <laughs> you understand me? I don't understand. Yeah, you, you see, 
what he may deem as a viable <laughs> communication Felix, strategy. Felix, you, you will come no, back. No, no, no. You will come, I will. come back to government. Absolutely. Right now. Right now. I will. <laughs> and I have been in a position yes. where I've had to disseminate government information. Right. What you do is that you elicit more suspicion if sometimes you try to be too smart. So it is better to be transparent if you have nothing to hide and the information you are giving is not classified, right. confidential, or does not harm the public good. Now, if you look at the last page of Mr. Nitiwo's statement, which is page 8, he appears to be addressing why they chose this aircraft and not the Falcon. And I'll read it. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the simple answer I would have given to the question would have been yes. Mm -hmm. The Falcon EX Easy with registration number 9GEXE is serviceable. But as members will now appreciate from my explanation, the decision to travel particularly to long and multiple destinations such as the president traveling to France, Belgium, South Africa, and back to Ghana, especially during this COVID era, would always require a larger capacity aircraft, such as a BBJ or Airbus ACJ 319U, even when the Falcon is airworthy. Yeah. So he what, seeks. What's wrong with that? Now I'm saying that there is everything wrong with this. Because the earlier explanation does not justify the use of this particular aircraft that was rented. And mind you, what are those explanations? Reach, range, and capacity. This aircraft can go to France. It is certain. Indeed, you have said that uh, Mr. Bakun appears to have suggested to him that you are aware that the aircraft went to France. That is easy to verify. If you type in the tail number, you can get it. If that aircraft went to France, then we had no business renting this jet. The reason being that the size of delegation and the problems it raises can be addressed by a much more affordable alternative agreement, which is commercial. How, how sure are you that um, traveling commercial would have been cheap? It is. Listen, Rand, let me give you a, a conservative estimate. Yes. Indeed, I will question Mr. Baku. I understand the reason why he wants to play safe and hear the finance minister. But I would urge him <laughs> that in this day and age, information is so widespread that sometimes official sources alone are not reliable. Look, Mr. Blackwa has been very conservative in his estimate. He has simply calculated the indicative price, which is 15,000 pounds an hour, by 23 hours, which is the amount of time the aircraft spent in the air. Mm -hmm. But nobody calculates aircraft leasing that way. Yes. The aircraft was with us for nine days between 25th, Ten. sorry, 16th and 25th. Mm -hmm. Andy, even if uh, Acropolis Aviation gave us a 60% rebate and said, okay, we should just pay 30% of the indicative price, which is 5,000 pounds. If you multiply that by 24 hours, you have 120,000 pounds a day. If you multiply that by 10, that is 1.2 million pounds. Even if I'm you... Not, I'm not sure that that's, that's how... Abarandi, that's look, how they charge. Like, but Randy, I agree with you. Yes. That a black quest is conservative. I have also used an even, an even more conservative estimate. I'm saying that, Randy, these people, they will not go too far away from the indicative price. There's a reason why they indicate the price. No, they could, they could. Yes, but I'm, even if they Especially did... Especially if they are dealing with government. Right. And they, but they even if they did... You know, this is not... You know, the, you know the part that interests me, maybe mm -hmm. you can yeah. find out for us later. Mm -hmm. It appears that this is not the first time yeah. that we have... Right. Of course, it's not. It's from not. this particular exactly. I think so. Randy. Yes. But this is the first time we are using this that we are using this particular Randy. one. The point I'm making... Uh, why we chose Randy. this particular one... The point I'm one. making is that even if they give us a 70% rebate, 60% rebate, yeah. and so we should pay just 5,000 pounds an hour, hmm? it will, will not be less than a million pounds. They will charge pounds. it like that. But Randy. They, will, they will give us like a daily rate for the 10 days. Yeah, but the daily rate will not be far. And too far. an incentive for them to continue Randy. 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 Yes. Randy. Yes. Randy. The, the, daily, the daily rate... Go for Randy. The yeah. daily I'm rate... No, it, it appears that we'll be renting this jet for a long time. Randy, Maybe this... <laughs> Maybe this particular this, issue Randy, will make us change. The daily rates, yes. oh, Randy, the daily rates, no, no, no. Randy, the daily I'm rates. I'm not sure the president will The daily rates will again. not be too far from the indicative price. Otherwise, they are not in business. Well, you are the other issue. Oh, but of course, why? Until the finance minister gives the final. Thank you. But the issue is that, the issue is that we are also allowed, based on the information available, to make analysis. Hmm. And yeah. everybody would agree. That what the Honorable Black Party did was conservative. It falls within reason. Was it responsible? How is it responsible? You ah, Randy, send Randy, a question no, to Randy, Parliament. No, no, Randy, answer, and you Randy, yourself there is no there. law. Rule. You can do that, no, but not no, you. No, 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 Randy. Nothing prevents a member of Parliament from engaging the public on an issue that he's raised. But, 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 Felix, in the previous Parliament, mm -hmm. was it the seventh or the eighth? Mm -hmm. In the previous Parliament, mm -hmm. I recall some MPs' um, urgent question. Mm -hmm. Being 
declined by the speaker on mm -hmm. the basis that they had gone public. They had gone public yeah, that on is the a, same that issue. That is against the standing That is at the discretion, that is at the discretion you can't of do the that. speaker. But I'm saying that in this day and age, you can't ask your question. Parliament, is not, you see, parliament is not a cocoon. Parliament is not a cult. Ultimately, this is about public interest. Indeed, if the cost was not an issue, there would be no issue at all for us to discuss. If this aircraft was free, who would care? But the advantage of the, advantage of the parliamentary question mm -hmm. is that there is the element of compulsion. Good. You know, that compels the minister. Lie. Yes. Run, but I'm saying that proves yes. that you I'm lie. saying that there are consequences. Run, yes. I am saying that beyond the question and the subsequent efforts by the minister to answer, MPs, public officials, members of the public, are allowed to engage the public on the issues they've raised. It is allowed. Unless there is some opacity, something to hide. What is your problem? Mm. Whether what Mr. Blackwell has said is true or not mm. can easily be verifiable. It is verifiable. Mm. So what is the fear? So those Mr. Blackwell feigning outrage about the fact that Mr. Blackwell has gone public is for me completely untenable. Mr. Blackwell has the right, as do all Ghanaians, to question the use of taxpayers' money. And he also says that it does not lie in my mouth to determine how the president travel. But the president does not have a right to misuse public funds. And if members of the public determine that he is doing so, we reserve the right to call him out. There are ways and means to do that. No. Yes, one of them is public commentary, which we are engaged in. One of them is public commentary. Randy, one of them. No facts. Ah, what facts? Randy, <laughs> what facts is in dispute at this moment? So why are you asking questions in parliament? What that is, that is no an official that there should platform. Be no, need for no, it. no, no, no. Why? Who says that even if the question was asked outside parliament, ministers are not required to answer? You are still obliged. Why do ministers issue statements all the time, seeking to debunk or confirm speculation? The VG story about the vaccines. Did anybody file an agent question in parliament? Was it not because the ministry heard that there was some public commentary on the matter that they issued two statements on the matter? So whether it is in parliament or not, the right of the Ghanaian to know is inalienable. And no government that conforms to modern democratic practices, which require transparency and accountability, will frown on that. It is only officials, it is procedural, that you go and file a question and wait for it and all that. But I'm saying that in this day and age, we have gone beyond secrecy and shrouding these things behind official practices. Everybody has a right to question. When Mr. Nitu went to parliament, he strayed into areas of cost. Indeed, he compared the cost of using an MI-17 helicopter. He spoke about the CASA. Yeah. He spoke about the CASA and the cost. He said it will cost $10,000 an hour to use the CASA. Yeah, that was not an answer to the yes, question. Yes, but he himself tried happened. to compare cost and justify why, first of all, this arrangement was necessary and why it may even be more prudent to buy a bigger jet. So if the minister himself has gone into the issue of cost, and Mr. Blackburn raises the issue, of course. Where lies Mr. Baku's contention? The other point about the debate about Shari in the air, it was the minister's own words. Whether somebody asked the direct question or not, he chose to say that the president cannot shower in our Falcon. People have taken umbrage, and rightly so, because the image it projects is that you want some creature comfort of the president. <coughs> is that shower or freshen up? But he said shower. What's wrong with that? Rani, really? I'm and saying that he was an unkempt. Rani, Rani, he was an unkempt Rani, listen. Yeah, but what really is wrong with it? It is wrong to the extent oh. that when you do that, you are asking for a certain kind of comfort, which the state readily cannot afford. That is oh, the crux of the matter. But, but, but sharing on a plane. It means that there's a bathroom. Yeah, but which would increase the cost. Uh, What's wrong, with Rani? The if, Falcon has a washroom. If you, if you say, travel, if you, if you travel, if you travel first class, oh, goodness. If you travel first class on Emirates. Mm -hmm. You have access to a shower. That is, I'm telling you. And it is cheaper than renting this aircraft. That's so true. if it's about showering, go to Emirates. You see, Randy, <laughs> the point that is about Kufi, you see, and indeed, Randy, indeed, let us make this point clear. You see, Randy, there is a regular economic situation in which we have always been. We are a developing country. So we've had these challenges for decades. And I'm sure in the foreseeable future we will have them. And then there are exceptional circumstances. This government's own cry has been that COVID has wrecked the economy. So much so that we grew by a paltry 0.4%. Our public debt is almost 80% to our GDP. Randy, I told you at the beginning of my submission that in order to pay interest on our debt and public salaries, we have to borrow 3 billion Ghana cities more, in addition to the revenue that we generated. So these are not <coughs> the normal socioeconomic difficulties that we have or we have had for decades. These are exceptional circumstances, compelling, very drastic fiscal measures by this government. Taxation, which people have decried. When you go into a situation like that, 
and you are telling us that we are not in normal times, you cannot behave normally. Indeed, it will hurt nothing if the person had decided to go commercial. You so mean that you cannot behave abnormally. Abnormally. No matter I say no, you cannot behave as if you are behaving in normal times. Mm. Indeed, even in normal times, if you use this kind of opulence, it is questionable. So we must distinguish the two scenarios. The age-old debate about the need to purchase an aircraft or not is substantially different mm -hmm. from the conversation we are having, where in very difficult times, the president chooses very lavish expenditure, which is not justifiable. And Randy, to the extent that this Falcon is available and has the capacity to make the distance that is under discussion, France, Belgium, South Africa, there was no justification. It cannot, it cannot do Belgium, South Africa without stopping. Yes, but what I'm saying, I've told you that what real harm was occasioned no one, no or was occasioned if a one hour... Look, Randy, the president does not even need to go home if he stops in Accra. There's a presidential lounge at the airport. But he doesn't need to stop in Accra. Yeah. No, I'm saying that <sighs> if that will spare us this expense, <clears> that <throat> one hour stop takes nothing away from the president. Look, we can also decide that we'll go and buy an Air Force One, just like the American president has. We can decide that we will do that. Mm. But that jet will cost us not less than $1.5 billion. Mm. Would it make sense? Simply because the president must travel in comfort and safety. The Americans can afford why, it, so they have to. Into the realm of no, it's not upset. It is, it is, it is a response to, to the argument you raised that what is wrong with having a shower. You can also go <laughs> for the ultimate. Wrong with the shower. But I'm saying that it Absolutely. is wrong to the extent that it imposes costs that we cannot shower. afford at this time. That is the scars of the argument. Yeah, but, but, uh, the, but the, the minister, well, I mean, bringing in the issue of... Uh, of he, I, I think at the point that, that Randy, you see, yeah, Randy, I think that I the point the that he sought to make yes. was that there is some discomfort with the Falcon. That is a, that is a, if, if you but was, it, was it in response to That's a question? A I don't know. But whatever it was, whatever it was... You are making a deduction. Yes, oh, but it's, a, it's an informal well, deduction. I have a text uh, from... Uh, I have a message from uh, Honorable John Jinapo. Yes. You know... And he says that the minister was categorical. He said, amongst others, that the president cannot shower in the current presidential jet. For me, we don't even need a finance minister to appear in parliament again to answer the question. The answer has been provided. So how come Muhammad did not charter such luxurious jets? Absolutely. I'm just trying to get it's the, ignored. the food. How is it ignored? completely ignored. How is it ignored? It, it has no ignored. value. It has value. You see, when so you say value, value, if you like. What, what do you say value? When you see, and Mr. Balcon, he's telling us that the uh, Minister of Finance shouldn't come to Parliament any longer because of what happened yesterday. No, no, no. There's a member of Parliament Mr. Bacon, talking there. Mr. Bacon, what is he saying? Mr. Bacon, it is imperative. Oh, and I'm goodness. sure in the past, you this joined, thing has been no, Mr. Bacon, okay, I'm sure in the past, I wasn't around, but I'm sure you joined in in the bashing of a champion over the fuck of 28. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have been a long-standing advocate for prudence in public expenditure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in the Gulf Stream debate, you were active. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Gulfstream, the debate was, some of us, our debate was a source. And since you remember yes, that? Yes, but you were still active. active. You were still active. Uh -huh. You were still active. That was where the matter I'm was. sure in the Embraer matter, you were active. About that or not, it was prudent. No. That, fine. No. Fine. Great. No. But I know what I even, if, even if you have supported all of this, mm. you have a duty as a panelist on this program mm. not to come across as endorsing opulence at this time. So, dismissing people's contribution and saying that it's of nuisance value and all that creates that impression that you are supporting the conduct. Uh, Randy. You are supporting the conduct uh, of this president. But when some of these things happen. No, it just, no, 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 no. You no. have made a judgment. Ah, Randy. My, producer, my producer informs me that you have the, a now. the full statement of the defense minister yeah. is available. So you yes, play. so please. So let's watch. Great. Uh -huh. That may help the discussion. This question offers the Minister of Defense. Particularly, the Ghana Air Force, an opportunity to explain matters related to Falcon 900 EX Easy with registration number 9G EXE and its air witness. First of all, Mr. Speaker, many Ghanaians wrongly believe that. The VVIP Jet Falcon 900 EX Easy is the property of the presidency. Let me explain today, for the benefit of the people of Ghana, that the VVIP Jet is the property of Ghana, but held in trust by the Ghana Air Force. And any time the president or any other VVIP intends to use it, the chief of staff at the presidency has to write to the Minister for Defense to seek permission to use it. Mr. Speaker, the Ghana Air Force has for a long time
had asked for the re-equipping of the communication squadron to enable them to perform their functions effectively. President John Ajekun Kufo heard this plea and decided to acquire for the Ghana Air Force a Boeing business jet, which is a BBJ, and I will continue to refer to it as a BBJ, and a Falcon 900 EX Easy Jet, though he knew at that time that he would not use them during his time as president. Mr. Speaker, the BBJ could carry over 100 passengers and about 40 passengers on VVIP settings. And it was intended for long haul journeys and also to act as a strategic airlift. The Falcon 900 EX Easy Jet, which has a maximum of 11 passengers minus the crew, was to serve as a backup to the BBJ and also to serve shorter routes. But for some strange reasons, Mr. Speaker, the BBJ order was cancelled by the new government in 2009. The Falcon 900 Easy Jet was the only aircraft that was delivered in 2010. The current Falcon 900, though serviceable, lacks enough range to reach long haul destinations without refueling stops. The Falcon 900 Jet will technically stop at airports where the president does not intend to do a stopover, and this could lead to unnecessary delays and placing a burden on an unintended host to offer diplomatic courtesies that they would not ordinarily be prepared for. Typically, a normal refueling stop takes about one hour, but in this COVID era, refueling may take about two hours or more because the passengers have to disembark and or the host country security has to enter the aircraft to inspect. The era of COVID-19 and its associated protocols, including distancing, has further brought to bear the inadequacies of our current aircraft fleet. Mr. Speaker, we must remember that ideally, a president must travel with his office that a staffers who will be around him in order for the president to be able to do his work efficiently and effectively, even without whilst abroad. As he stands, Mr. Speaker, it is important that he travel to his security as well as his presidential press for when necessary. Currently, when the president uses the Falcon 900 Easy Jet, most of these other necessary staffers travel commercial with increased cost, as well as suffering attendant delays in transit because of the lack of direct flights to ultimate destinations. Because of the lack of direct flight to the ultimate destinations, Mr. Speaker, where the President has to travel to two or three destinations on a trip, two or three separate staff units have to be deployed to each of these countries. With the difficulty of air travels lately, especially within Africa, staffers sometimes do not arrive at their intended destinations in time to make the programs. Ultimately, cost is a huge drawback as well. Mr. Speaker, the communication squadron of the Ghana Air Force is the diplomatic and strategic reach of Ghana. That reach and influence is a national brand that requires air access that are commensurate to the volume of government business beyond the boundaries of Ghana. Diplomacy is speed and influence as well as investment. The capacity of the current Falcon aircraft is far below that of Falcon 28, which flew VVIPs of more than 25 passengers during the era of Achampon, President Achampon, President Akufo, President Rawlings and President Kufo era, hence the urgent need to up, to urgent need for an appropriate aircraft which can better carry a payload of between 70 and 100 people and to carry their luggage as well without affecting the performance of the aircraft. Mr. Speaker, it is interesting to note 
that the armed forces of countries such as Mali, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Eswatini, Nigeria, Chad, Niger, which is some people call Niger, Uganda, Congo, Kenya, Morocco, Equatorial Guinea, just to mention a few, all have a Boeing or Airbus jet of the capacity I have just mentioned to serve as strategic airlifts. Mr. So Speaker, the Ghana Air Force of Ghana is once again requesting for a multifunctional aircraft to add to its inventory as a requisite command and control asset to be able to connect Ghana's national security to diplomacy. The strategic value of this jet is not less a national asset, and indeed, it compares equally to acquiring fighter jets as well as armed helicopters. The strategic value of a BBJ or Airbus jet is born out of deep thinking and understanding of the Ghana Air Force capability to link diplomacy, international security with national vital interest. It is more expensive not to have a BBJ or Airbus jet which can serve as a strategic airlift. For example, Mr. Speaker, Ghana has spent over 50 million United States dollars over the last 10 years since the BBJ was cancelled to ferry soldiers going on peacekeeping missions alone. If the Air Force had a strategic airlift, this amount of 50 million United States dollars would have been saved to the Treasury. If I were to add, Mr. Speaker, for example, football players, domestic travels, government officials, parliamentary travels, chiefs and other opinion leaders that the Air Force is normally tasked to airlift, the figure of 50 million United States dollars, dollars would easily double over the last 10 years. Mr. Speaker, Permit me to share some few thoughts on the cost of traveling by aircraft that we have on our inventory. Of all the categories, Mr. Speaker, that we have, the MI-17, which is the helicopter, is the most expensive per working hours and maintenance. One hour of a chartered MI-17 by the UN or World Food Program is 5,000 United States dollars. One hour of a CASA is 10,000 United States dollars. And one hour of a Falcon 900 is 10,000 United States dollars. These are standard prices for planning. But for a president, Mr. Speaker, who flies every three or six months in a year, the use of a bigger chartered jet will ultimately become cheaper if the delegation is more than 20 people or 20 passengers. Mr. Speaker, President Nana Adodankwa Akufado is one president who prefers to go by road if the Minister of Defense considers his schedule. If we consider his schedule within the country and outside the country, this president normally would prefer to travel by road. The choice to travel by road, by air, or by sea is a national security imperative and I have reason to release the aircraft, this particular aircraft, to other VVIPs, including ex-presidents, to carry out national duties. VVIP, or presidential travel, is not about aircraft type. It is not even about cost, but it's all about safety, safety and safety of the aircraft crew and the passengers. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the simple answer I would have given to the question asked by the Honorable Member would have been a simple yes. The Falcon EX Easy with registration number 9G EXE is serviceable. But as members 
will now appreciate from my explanation earlier, the decision to travel particularly to long and multiple destinations, such as the president traveling to France, Belgium, South Africa, and back to Ghana, especially during this COVID time, would always require a larger capacity aircraft, such as a DBJ or an aircraft ACJ 319U, even when the Falcon is airworthy. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The showering uh, and the freshening up was uh, um, as a result of a supplementary. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it is framed. Yes. You can tell, even though we don't have the benefit of the exact clip, mm -hmm. that he was explaining why they rented this ACJ 320 new. That reason I'm not others. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but Mr. Baku, I have dealt with all the reasons. There are three range, size. Both of them are not tenable. Range, this aircraft can go to France, as has been demonstrated here. It could have come to Ghana and gone to South Africa. The only hitch will be a one hour or two hour stop. That won't take anything away from the president. You In terms of numbers. You are not entitled to this. No, but I'm entitled. Why? Randy, why? <laughs> Why are we not entitled to that? It was not an emergency summit in South Africa. And besides that's why there is planning. You plan these things. You don't just get up and travel. So we as citizens are entitled to question the judgment that our leaders exercise. And the explanations that officials give are also subject to scrutiny. In this instance, the explanation does not cut ice. Both in terms of range and the numbers better that you are talking about. The president, the, the delegation that he goes with, even the press corps alone his security detail, the staffers that the minister alludes to, they will all not fit even in the BBJ, uh, what do you call it, jet, business, uh, Boeing business jet. You understand me? So whatever it takes, people will go commercial. Randy, the truth is and that if they had gone commercial and even flown business class, it will be cheaper than this arrangement. Well, that that's speculative. It is not speculative, the but the facts are available. We all know how much a business class ticket costs. Mm. And it's returned. So you go to France and come back to Ghana. Or move to Ghana to South Africa and come back. <laughs> and indeed, I have heard it said that the, the, the Minister of State for Finance, uh, Honorable Charles Edubuahim, he actually went commercial. He was part of this delegation. Mm -hmm. So, and others too went. I have been on presidential delegations. I have gone commercial, as have many others. So the, the issue at stake really is that all the explanations being offered do not explain or justify the choice. And the inevitable conclusion that one reaches is that they prioritize the president's creature comforts and thirst for luxury over prudence. Okay, so that is at the so Bubu, Bubu Kinogo, who is a GBC's parliamentary correspondent, mm -hmm. uh, he says that the aspect of sharing on the jet was a response to a follow-up question. Yeah. The minister sought to say that the president could not move straight from the Falcon to a meeting or conference because he cannot shower in the jet and that in that situation the president would have to go a day earlier or some hours earlier to lodge in a hotel. Marani, yeah. again, if I may yes. ask, what but, is wrong? But the question is, uh, Marani, but of course this helps. Marani, yeah. this, this Marani helps. again, the explanation so, that the president has to go. What is wrong with going a day earlier? You are going to a conference. You First of all, you know the pre president's schedule. You don't I was schedule. Know. Randy, you don't, ah, Randy, you yeah. don't just get up. Randy, Abby. Randy you don't just get up. It is obvious that no, 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 no. decided on a certain no trajectory. Yes. But they say that no, we can say that no matter you have also what decided that you, would, you would justify no. this. But the answers no, are started to scrutiny. I'm dealing with the questions that were asked. And yeah, but I'm also it. doing the same. I'm also <laughs> looking at the explanations. Randy, let's wait for today. There's practice. Yes. President Kofado is not the first president Ghana has had. So there's established practice. The conference he was going to, he was not informed of it 24 hours before he left Ghana. He must have corresponded with the organizers and accepted. So he had time to plan. The claim that if you used a Boeing business jet or a bigger aircraft, or in this case the ACJ 320 new, you don't have to go a day before. It's also not tenable. Going a day before or a few hours before does not take uh, anything away from the president. In fact, Indeed, it is much in better. In fact, I doubt that he will just walk into a meeting. The president like will want to travel and walk into a meeting from Ghana to Europe and walk into and a meeting. And then from the airport go straight when to it is not an emergency. No, that would be some issue. Yeah, yeah it, it will be, 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 be So again, 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 where the explanation against the practice. But, but I want to read two text messages to you too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It mirrors something. When I finish reading them, you appreciate it. So, Marco Jobafu says that as we discuss the hiring of an aircraft by the president of Ghana, that we term ostentatious, 
America is spending $5.3 billion to replace aging models of Air Force One. The security of every president is paramount, no matter the cost. So that's Marco Jobuafo's view. Now, this one, where did he vanish to? Okay. So, Amin Itamale says that the president's expenses on travel for these nine days could have paid NAPCO trainees for one year. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> Oh, no, is it, no, no, no. Is it, Mr. Well, good, that's is it that flippancy is problematic? That's unfair. You see, that's this that's is that's what that. Rawlings meant. Is it populist noise? No, Randy, Randy, no. Randy, no. Randy, that's wrong. Randy, no. Okay. Randy, two issues. That's wrong. Randy, two issues. Hold on. Is it Felix Zodo? I apologize. Yes. I get distracted. That level of flippancy is extremely problematic. The second point about security, Randy, we cannot compare ourselves to the United States of America. Yes. No, but that's not okay. what he meant. But that, yeah. no, the, the first text. Yeah, that's he said that America is very much. We are the same. Yes. I mean, Randy. And indeed, well, I yeah. think the point he's making is that America is spending not on the basis of the fact that they are rich, but on the basis of the fact that the security of the president Randy. is yeah. key. Randy. So he didn't really the security do. of President Akufuado mm. is not compromised by his use of the Falcon. Mm. At least it has not been demonstrated. Nobody has demonstrated that. Indeed, what is the difference between this? Acropolis jets and the Falcon in terms of security. If you read the specifications of the aircraft, as I have put out here, it is a robust aircraft built to but suit the VIPs. The first minister didn't deny that. Yeah, so, so this is something. And again, Randy, I've had a comparison that America is spending $5.2 billion. This is the richest country in the world. They can, and indeed, if you look at the expenditure, it will maybe, fit into their strategic objectives. Maybe not the figure, but it, just the yeah, fact that they the, keep... He was illustrating you know, yeah. something. Not yes, but we don't have the same requirements. The security needs of President Biden are not the same as President Kufuadu. Because of who they uh, are. Anyway, the choice of this particular see, jet see, was not on the basis of security. security. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Randy, it was just comfort. Mm. Comfort. <laughs> the creature comfort of the president. <laughs> that is at the heart. That is what all the objective facts point to. No, no, no. That is what all the objective facts point to. Because the, best, the, the minister has not convinced That's why about you, the, Security, the it has been debunked. What numbers, it, numbers, it has been debunked. So what else is there? Okay. Creature comfort. That's all. Creature uh, so, comfort. So, and so, Mary, but in terms of comfort, Randy, our, I, I really wish that they will be transparent to publish the pictures of the insides of the Falcon. Oh, so you see whether in terms of comfort, he's even significantly disadvantaged. Uh, are you asking? That oh, but why not? But, but, but the, why? The jet that you use is public information. But, but the, 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 yeah. the... No, I'm talking about the insights. They should the, put the, it out. The <laughs> issue of So comfort. that we see where that comfort is. Maybe with the exception of mm -hmm. showering, mm -hmm. the issue of comfort and has been raised against shower. the Falcon. You can't raise the issue of comfort against yeah, it's not yeah. been raised. Yeah. So, so, what so is the be, as I, I go for the break, there's this, you, one, you, there's you this are, one. You are that, the neutral habitat. Tell us. There's this one that cracked After all me. these points, there's this one that cracked what me. What investigation is there again? Stosta says very soon our president will be asking for a swimming pool on the flight for purposes of exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I nearly <laughs> the offensive. And, and it is extremely important that those who comment on this are not flippant and disrespectful to the people of Ghana. It's extremely important. Very, very important. <laughs> don't, don't, don't try and play the victim here. In Ghana and in Africa, there is only one place to look to get that luxurious design and decor for your offices and homes. Visit Jamila Home. We give you the climax of luxury wherever you find yourself. Presidential and executive office furniture, living room sets, dining sets, stunning mirrors, adorable wallpapers, lovely king and queen size beds, valuable antiques and antique goods, beautiful chandeliers and more. Into the bargain, we provide care in customer service, prompt delivery service, skilled and artistic full house design and decor services, and free decor ideas for your space. Our products and service is unparalleled, boasting of top tier clients all over the globe. Jamila Home, home of first class quality furniture, beautiful chandeliers, and antiques. Blood gives life. 
blood is very important. Let's donate blood to save lives. On Saturday, June 19, 2021, Metro TV, Original TV and Original FM humbly invite you to be part of blood donation exercise at the premises of Metro TV, close to Alisa Hotel on Dr. Isar Street at Northridge in Accra. The exercise will start at 7 o'clock in the morning. It is in commemoration of the World Blood Donation Day. Join us save lives as we donate blood for the blood bank. This exercise is in partnership with Blue Skies, Pharma Nova, manufacturers of 3 First Serum, number one builder of blood cells. There's a place for people like you. Tell you what, whenever I need a serene environment to cool off, I always come to Pediasi Valley Resort. It's a crazy world out there, but as a father, I need to keep it. Well, it's not ego, it's not about fear, but it's about survival. But as a man, as a father, you are the backbone of the family. Fatherhood is driven by the passion to make the world a much better place to live in. And as a father, all you need to do is to ensure that all those who rely on you, your friends, your family, feel that passion. It's a father's work. The role of a father is quite significant. A father is worth more a hundred schoolmasters. And tell you what, when your father hasn't got your hand, He's always got your back. Honor your dad this Father's Day with a special Father's Day buffet lunch at Pujase Valley Resort. Right, welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, this is Good Morning Ghana live on Metro TV. And, um, you know, I, I always feel bad when our viewers don't get the opportunity of uh, <laughs> enjoying <laughs> the off-air <laughs> conversations <laughs> here in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> but this show is brought to you in kind partnership with Ex Natural Mineral Water. Still with me on the show, Felix Kwachu Fusu and Abdul Malik uh, Kweku Baku. Kweku, the last time we discussed this issue of the vaccine mm -hmm. and the issues that have been raised in terms of the pricing and all that. Uh, you, your view, if I remember correctly, was that uh, the issues that have been raised require some clarity and information from the Ministry of Health. Uh, they have issued a statement. The Ministry of Health uh, has issued a statement. The Minister of Health has spoken on a couple of occasions. Uh, <coughs> Have you gotten the clarity that you want? Not exactly. Mm. I have to be honest with you. Uh, that day, of course, last week, Thursday, yes. I was totally at sea because I didn't have information. And people thought I was uh, just trying to dodge the issues, issues you know. There were all sorts of posts here and there. I some. Yes, it was so unfair. The truth is that I like to speak based on knowledge, information, beyond conscience and commitment, you know. So that day, I had to hedge, if you like, deliberately. Subsequent to that, I tried to do uh, some research, get some more information and knowledge. So I think I was more explicit when I appeared on News 5. Oh, okay. Saturday, I, didn't, I didn't listen. Yeah, the yeah. issue came up. Uh, I'm still not convinced, uh, especially relative to the Sheikh, what's the name, Maktoum or Maktoum. whatever, yes. Yeah. Deal because they've signed it, okay. They've actually virtually executed it, the agreement, I mean. But I am aware a source at the Ministry of Health whispered into my ears Friday night, last Friday night, that the Attorney General apparently had advised that that particular deal required parliamentary approval. Really? Yes. And should go to parliament. Mm -hmm. 
as we speak, my checks with Parliament indicate no such agreement has been brought. Maybe it may be sent subsequent to our discussion, I don't know. But we've made some payments already. Um, letters of credit, you mean? Yes. Uh, it's a commitment. Yeah. It's a commitment. Yes. But that's why I use the word executed yes. in a way, quote unquote. You know, but. In fact, we are told that some has been delivered, whether yeah. it's 15,000 or whatever. Wait, those, I thought those were samples. For no, samples. They were if the you first read batch. agreement, if you read agreement, the 3.4 million is inclusive of that. Okay. It's a fair yeah. So I have a difficulty. Um, hugely challenged with that. And indeed, I made a call for it to be reviewed or even dropped in its entirety because of the breach of Article 1815, in my candid opinion. Mm. Somebody may have an alternative view, but relative to that particular agreement, that's where I stand. There's another one about S and Global. Global. Yeah. They appear to have a local yes. connection or yes. so, so that may not re necessarily require parliamentary approval. Mm. So, but out there too, it appears we are dealing with other sources, yes. multiple entities. You go on the website of the company, it describes itself as an agent. Yeah, uh, see, yes. and uh, the, what my source, and indeed, I uh, think by end of day, I may have a copy of whatever the advice mm -hmm. was, but it appears that advice, apart from saying take it to parliament, mm -hmm. there was also the element that you must deal with the manufacturers or mm -hmm. certified agents yes. of the manufacturers, yes. and that the Sheikh's office, mm -hmm. private office, is neither of those things. Yes. So there's a complication yes. there too. Apart from the constitutionality element, there's also the question of who are you dealing with? And that even the Russians and things are indicated that you can deal with the manufacturers or deal with the agents, yes. certified agents yes. of the manufacturers. Yes. The shape so you go to a website of a company, the company that is supposed to be Ghanaian, mm -hmm. and on their website is indicated that they are agents. Mm -hmm. Now, you go to the F, uh, FDIF. RDIF. Yes, RDIF. Mm -hmm. And RDIF to, tells you about who they have mm -hmm. authorized. authorized to deal on their behalf. Have they been listed? I haven't seen it. Okay. So the question there again is, yeah. what convinced you? To I mean, did you double check yes, on that claim? Yes, yes, I agree. So on basis of all these parameters and the fact that we are dealing with others that aren't too public, we are not sure. So I called for publication of all the agreements, all the contacts that we've made so that we can examine them properly. Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, as much as I realize the agency, the emergency nature of all these things, mm -hmm. uh, Randy, to the extent of yes, we want to rescue the Ghanaian, we don't want Ghanaians to die and all those things. You know, dead men don't talk, they don't produce uh, wealth and all the rest, but that's no excuse to also breach procurement if it, we're giving with the benefit of hindsight yeah. look the the argument about emergency you know that look Kovacs informed us that they can deliver end of june or early july that's from the minister of health that's right and from the same minister of health he said that uh, with the shakes when they were supposed to deliver in tranches and complete it by the end of june so the 3.4 million they were supposed to deliver in tranches up to the end of June. Mm -hmm. As we speak today, yeah. it's the 17th of June. That's right. So it, even the argument about emergency and we needed to vaccinate people and all that, of the 8.4 million, that's between SL Global and uh, Sheikh Maktoum, of the 8.4 million, how many have we received? Because as we speak as a country, we have not started vaccinating anybody with uh, 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 Sputnik V. Yeah. So Randy, to be honest with you, after uh, you know, doing some little mm -hmm. research and all those things, I consider this whole thing untidy. Mm -hmm. And I'm being charitable mm -hmm. with my choice of ways. Mm -hmm. So my position is that we need to re-examine this whole thing. As for the shake one, they need to drop it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't qualify mm -hmm. on all the legs that I've established in terms of the constitution, in terms of what uh, the requirement deal with certified agents or deal with the manufacturers. It doesn't qualify. Couldn't there be implications for us? Because it looks like our authorities have committed us in many, many, many ways. Well, they, they have to come and explain themselves. But I mm. 
if you ask me for my opinion, mm. my judgment within this context, that's where I stand. Mm. There's even another thing, and I'm told we're advised to, mm. that uh, there's Food and Drugs Authority. Yes. If you read the agreement, mm -hmm. it's also not explicit. It's not there to the effect that they must certify, you know, the use of those vaccines. There's a mistake. Okay, there's, 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 a, there's a certification of Sputnik V by the FDA for yeah. use in Ghana. Well, that's Yeah, for use in Ghana. That's, that's just the, the general thing. Yeah, but there's... Well, but, as to, but, but there is also the issue of FDA actually checking what is actually brought mm. to ensure that he emits it or not. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. Yes, uh, something like the because agreement a, is silent. There's a part of the agreement that, uh, uh, that uh, indemnifies the suppliers against um, effects or repercussions on the user and all those things. That's, that's a line. Yes, see, uh, you say the agreement is silent on whether or not mm -hmm. the Food and Drugs Authority has certified and approved these vaccines for use. Which uh, document is this? This is an industrial secret. <laughs> oh, I think you're not opinion. No. <laughs> no. Oh, but sir, it's, no, if, no, if no, you no. are managed to it's research, research. No. I don't think that is. No, it. no, it's no, not, no, no. It's not okay, it's a, it's a conversation. No, 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 no. It's okay, not, fine, fine. This uh, is my own notes. <laughs> 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 the yeah, notes you've made from your, your from research on the matter. Yes. So, uh, you know, on all this, yes. and so, Randy, some of those things are too elementary, mm. ought not to be problematic. Is it to suggest that, Goku, is yes. it to suggest that the Attorney General did not examine these documents before we entered into the agreements, or he examined them, he gave his advice, but it was ignored? Well, what son, have you picked up? Yes, uh, it looks as if it was signed before it, it was, was given to him. Yes, it okay. looks that way. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well, again, yes. again, this comes back to propriety see, on the part of governments and prudent use of public resources. And in this whole discussion, we've constantly heard the refrain about we are not in normal times and there was a need to vaccinate people quickly lest we lose lives and all that. Indeed, some have gone as far as saying that did we expect government to sit aloof whilst people died from COVID? And therefore, the threat of deaths was sufficient grounds for this sort of agreement to be entered into. But Randy, you see, we are not a backwater republic. We are not a banana republic. We are, I would like to believe that we are a serious country, despite all our challenges. So our arrangements and institutional practices make room for emergency procurement. Indeed, the Procurement Act. Yeah makes room for emergency procurement. It simply means that you fast track the process instead of going through the normal ones. So if you go through the process that is recommended by law, you will still be able to meet your timelines in a manner that does not compromise the safety and health of Ghanaians. So there can be no excuse for acting in a manner that is shady and opaque on account of an emergency. As you indicated, despite all the claims of emergency, we have still not received the vaccines. So the case of emergency does not even arise. But I am shocked to hear about this new angle that Mr. Baku has introduced, to the extent that there is actually some advice from that. In fact, to the extent that it is related, it is completely irrelevant. It does not exonerate those who engaged in this procurement in any way, shape, or form. It, what it actually evinces is an attempt to cover up the tracks of those who engage in this thing. Why? Otherwise, what's the use? Why? Are you telling me that the Minister of Health and his officials were not aware that in a transaction like this, they needed advice on the attention? But we've had, well, we had situations where we have had to go to court with agreements that were executed. Randy and Gates. those who executed them didn't think that Randy they needed parliamentary but approval. It is precisely because of the experience we've so had. So they should have ethics. learned. That we should have learned. Yes. Indeed. This alone is sufficient grounds to dismiss everybody involved in this matter. It is not excusable. It is not the first time we are engaging in procurement. And indeed, the party that is in power now was particularly loud in the recent past about some of these practices. So it cannot be an excuse. Indeed, it is further incentive to punish those who are engaged in this matter. Because they cannot claim not to have known. The Minister of Health, I still believe, is an MP. Yes, he's a member of parliament. Yeah, yes. He is. So he, more than anybody else, should have been aware 
of the international business transaction implications of this arrangement, and therefore ought to have sought, uh, what do you call it? Indeed, who else in the government chain knew of this and authorized this? I would like to believe that the president was aware that such expenditure was going to be incurred. And really, the reason why it is problematic is that even the monies we are using for these transactions. Ah, so, the, so at least the people at the finance ministry could not have advised in 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 in, in giving approval. Mm -hmm. I mean, or agreeing there, to. There should be there should be some a template exactly. which that says that for us to approve, give approval for this, you must meet these. You must meet yeah. one, two, three, four, five. So the conclusion that one can reach in light of this flagrant bypass of laid down procedure is that it was deliberately done with a view to seek rent. That is the explanation that can be had. Because you see, Randy, the reason why it is important that we always go back to the original publication is that you see a certain chain. And what we have done is that we've put ourselves in very negative light, at least in the eyes of those who have come to our aid in these COVID times. Mm. There is an argument about whether or not even the Sheikh is actually an authorized dealer in this particular matter. Mm. And if you read the VG publication, the Sheikh is a businessman, so yes. he's entitled to transact business. Yes. But if you read the VG publication, mm -hmm. you will find the link how the Sheikh himself came to acquire it. Mm -hmm. There is a Norwegian friend. businessman mm -hmm. who is friends with Steven Seagal, yes. who is a friend to Putin. Yes. And so he used his connections to apparently obtain the vaccine for this businessman. Uh, Kwego, have you been able to find out how, why President Kufuado hasn't, hasn't called Putin or could not call Randy. Putin to... Randy. But last time I told you that that was my... In fact, the little like, point I had to make mm. was my disappointment mm. Randy, with the failure of government to government. That, that, Randy, mm. that could because not... Because he didn't really stand Especially when other African countries... Yes, are Randy, that, you see, yeah. that, that excuse... But I haven't double checked. That okay. excuse is a post facto rationalization. It cannot be possible. If you reach Putin, Randy, you will get these vaccines because other countries have done same. And we have long-standing relations with Russia. Sure. Starting from Nkomer's time. They have trained and many of our prominent training. engineers. We have arrangements with I mean, if, if we can't strike this, what's the point in even keeping an embassy and Randy, an ambassador? Doing? Randy, even beyond that, we actually have gone as far as entering into arrangements with the manufacturers of this vaccine to, to conduct together. trials. They are currently they are, they are, here. They are conducting yeah, yeah. trials. Yeah. So you have such reach and leverage and connections as to be able to engage in agreements to conduct trials. Yet you cannot ask them that even as you conduct these trials, make sure that we get the vaccine at the recommended international price that you yourself have put up. So the conclusion once again is that people close their eyes deliberately to these steps that needed to be undertaken in order to engage in rent seeking for some profit to be creamed. That is what this whole thing is pointing to. And it comes back to the secrecy and opacity that has attended this whole COVID expenditure. You recall that NGO's work, which somehow, and I have to, I may criticize those of you in the media, I think that perhaps you should go back to that body of work and examine the context. You know, my, 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 my There's an NGO, they call themselves, uh, you see? I've got a community. Oh, the, no, 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 Felix, no. Okay. my issue is that mm -hmm. I read the report. That mm -hmm. one base in the north. And I was somewhere. looking for... Oh. Mm -hmm basis for some of the conclusions. Mm -hmm. You know, because I sit here and mm -hmm. I need to be careful. True. You understand? I was least, looking for basis. basis. At the very least, they have provided what I consider to be basic material. As we speak, I, I stand to be corrected, but there's no official audit yes. of the COVID-19 expenditure. Uh -huh. It does not mean that if there is information that we can at least ask questions about. You see, so, 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 Felix, from my point of view, for example, if there is an audit report, mm -hmm or there is some documentary proof, mm -hmm. and on the basis of that, those assertions are made. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will get in there. Barandi. You are the I'm just speaking for myself. I'm just asking you. They even claim to work with the Commonwealth Foundation. Randy. It's not true. The people, Randy, but they don't necessarily need to work with the Commonwealth. No, but they claim so. Yes, I'm saying that they don't need to work with that the Commonwealth. That alone, credibility for, crisis. For their conclusions to be at least examined. But if you make a claim. Me. But that, that is beside the point yeah. in any event. I'm sure if you have because a Because for, for a person like me, mm -hmm. you have to be careful. I, I, will, be, I will be extremely interested in something, something like, like that. Yeah. 
Ask so for me not to show. Randy, but you see, yeah. Randy, but, but, but asking questions, yeah. asking questions yeah. can elicit information that is vital. Oh, if, yeah. if this Norwegian yeah, yeah. journalist yeah. had not ventured to conduct this investigation, yeah. we will be in the cold. We will sit here thinking that all is kosher. And you know, and wait and for you realize, official and you realize that, that to you realize that mm -hmm. he provided proof. Yes, he provided proof. Yes, I agree. Sometimes some of our institutions they may not have similar capacity because, mind you, there's an established. Uh, newspaper that perhaps has resources that can be deployed. They may not you have, have capacity, yeah. but let us not be quick to dismiss. So that, that's, the, that's, Indeed, a, that's a Norwegian that, journal. Indeed, yeah. the, when they raised the issue of this uh, COVID-19 application that was launched, the Minister of Communications was so flippant and dismissive. She didn't even venture to state whether or not there was any expenditure or there was not. She says that they should withdraw it or she will use it as toilet paper. Very disrespectful response to what I believe to be a legitimate inquiry. And we cannot allow this sort of thing to happen. Was it not more of a conclusion rather than an inquiry? Than an inquiry. If somebody says that you spent 10 cities on an application as part of the effort to tackle COVID and you have not done so, a public official, your duty is to state whether it is so or but it is must, so. But, but ah. must the person who accepts Thank you. not provide at Something least of evidential something? Value. But to show that but, but I am Randy, making this claim Randy, on the basis of Randy, this. Randy, people do not have the same level of information as yeah. ministers. Sometimes because you are here speaking sometimes about the jet and you are speaking to... On the basis of facts. Yes. Yeah, but why? These facts were gleaned, not from official sources. Yes. Even in that enterprise, people are questioning whether or not people should have gone out to speak and, no, and do conservative issue, estimates. That, that's, 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 <laughs> that's, 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 that's the point is that opinion, not facts. The, the point I seek to make mm. is that there appears to be a lot... That is hidden in this mm. whole corporate transaction. True. The arrangements do not appear to have been in conformity. And it's becoming one too many. Uh, in, at this juncture in our forward match as a country, these things are not excusable. Again, I have not been impressed with the manner in which the Minister of Health especially has handled this matter. I did not, with a, I need to be candid, I did not listen to his uh, press briefing yesterday. I don't know whether you did. And whether or not he touched mm -hmm. on this specific did he touch on it? I did. I don't know. He, yes, he, oh, okay. he, he. Yes, but you see, it is problematic to the extent that it, it, it shows that he is hiding from something. I would have thought no, that as a man. So that's the process. Yes, I would have thought that as a man with ultimate responsibility for addressing this matter, who is answerable to the president. He appears tired and, and frustrated. Especially this. Exactly. He would have to one. publicly state. He appears state. tired, stressed, yeah. and frustrated. Randy, it is not. It, mm -hmm. Is it, Randy? Yes, there are human frailties, uh, but uh, if he does not have the capacity and temperament to show that responsibility, he should tell her. But once you are there, we expect you to work. But he is not approaching the matter with seriousness. He is not showing respect to the people of Ghana. He, he, he has no desire to clarify the matters. And he's leaving them hanging. Need, even the statements that are issued, you, you see that the person them. issuing them is a civil servant who is not available for further comment. So it appears that there is some effort to put a blockade between the public and accessing information about this matter. And now we are left hanging as we speak. There's no clarity on the matter. Again, the president too, who at the beginning of this COVID, uh, what do you call it, Kabudo, appeared to be engaging the public, also appears to have taken a back seat. I would have thought that in the absence of willingness on the part of the minister to show that responsibility and speak to the matter and clarify it. The president will take interest in the matter. Because you know if he will not speak Sunday. How do you know? Oh, but, 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 look, sufficient time has passed. <laughs> mm, Randy. And Randy, this is a president who has taken interest in matters, oh, some of which are less significant than this matter. I don't accept the fact that we should be kept in suspense. That's why the president will speak. In other matters, the president has acted within 24 hours. When a minister went to say something uncomplimentary uh -huh. about people of Northern Extraction, you saw the speed which it was acted. When, uh, what's his name? This Tema West MP, Carlos, mm -hmm. when he misconducted himself in the COVID matter, you saw this, this part with which it was acted upon. One, one could argue that elections were approaching, so the president needed to show some seriousness. But in this matter, I believe that the issues are grave enough to warrant official intervention, uh, evading scrutiny, evading questions, and pretend that the matter will go away won't suffice. There are audio recordings of the Minister of Finance granting interviews and speaking to the matter to the Norwegian authorities. They are the ones 
who actually did payment it's based on what they say. The ministry is of the declined to speak to exactly. that media house. Me, yeah, they can exercise. That. They can exercise that that word, but at least you know, even the fact mm -hmm. that you see, for even for the optics, mm -hmm. the fact that the minister of finance spoke. Yes, and the minister of health decided not to. Andy, speak. I'm saying that they can decline comments on a specific publication to a specific journalist. It is their right to do so. But once they determine that the matter has broken out mm. and there's public interest, they must be forthcoming. They must well, they are, But they are speaking. But they are not. How, what are they? The, minister, the what, first, they issue the statement <laughs> to announce, announce that they issue a statement. Issue a statement. Be very and they issue that statement. Which statement, I recall, you sat here and completely decimated because it did not meet basic standards. I've taken it, <laughs> that statement off my files. Absolutely. Because it did not meet. But you see, it showed the lack of seriousness. I would have thought that yesterday was a not a lack of seriousness. Probably, it there, make probably sense. There's, there's nothing. Yes, but yesterday at least the minister had opportunity on a public platform to address the matter comprehensively. Well, well at he, least he addressed something that you've been worried about. Which one? Agenda one one one. You have been berating them on that. He's addressing. We are in June. He says work on thirty five hospitals start next month in fulfilment of a president's promise Randy. last year, and it's listed. Randy. the projects. Let me give you the list. Oh, Randy. So, Randy don't, don't worry. Oh. oh, Randy, don't worry. The I president want to list himself, the 35 Randy, for you. The president himself, mm. I think in late April or June last year, exactly a year ago, told us that work was going to be in July. It did not happen. In government, the most authoritative voice on government activities is the president himself. If the president himself speaks and it did not materialize, I will not repose confidence in the minister. In any event, they promised 111. If you say I'm going to start 35, it is very nebulous. Mm. If you go to the Marginal Hospital, they have put a fence around the wall and draped the wall in pictures or of the proposed. So this is what the minister said. Mm -hmm. He said the government's agenda 111, which will see to the construction of 111 hospitals across the country, was on course. He said by the end of July, mm -hmm. the president would hit the road running, mm -hmm. in quotes. As all the technical issues such as acquisition of land, soil testing, designs, and all others have been completed. Ready? You see, above all else, the thing that enables a project to take off is money, cash, money. In my estimation, these projects they are talking about, if you consider just the district hospitals they say they will build, I believe that what they are building actually are polytechnics. Because polyclinics. Polyclinics are very important. The $5 million that they are speaking about, it cannot equip a district hospital. $5 million. $5 million. That's, that's what they say. Is that what they said? That's what they are saying to cost. The vice president subsequently has come out. In the wake of the president's address, I'm talking about the district hospital components, not the mm -hmm. Nigerian hospital and the rest. Mm -hmm. He says that they will build each one for five million dollars. Oh. That's what he has said. Yes, but you see, again, they they want to take the group of Ghana for granted. Meanwhile, no, but this this agreement they were taken to parliament. Yes, yes, but, yeah, but there was nothing uh, like five million. The yes. vice so president himself has publicly said so. Uh, oh. yes. yes. So if you put everything, we are talking about close to 300 to 400 million dollars for the district hospital component alone. So they are going to, even if they pull it off, and I have grave doubts that they will, given the time constraints, given financial constraints and all that, what they are proposing to build are polyclinics, not district hospitals. Because the president himself went to cut sword for a district hospital in Shama, and the cost is $35 million. So how can you build one district hospital for $35 million and build another one for $5 million, as the vice president seeks to claim? So there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of haziness. I given the constraints that we have as a country and the problems that COVID has exposed, we we'll hope that these things are done so that at least it ensures that we are not caught wrong-footed when these things happen again. But if you are a member of the public, I would urge caution. Because the president said that the there West. will be 100 standard 100 bed facilities. Yes. Yes. Subsequently, the vice president came and out. And it will come with that. accommodation for staff. Subsequently, the vice president came out. I need to out. double check that. Subsequently, the vice president came to say that it will cost 5 million dollars. Sure. Yes, absolutely. And he's, indeed, you recall that he wrote a letter to all these assemblies asking them to indicate land, land where yes. they were. Yeah, all of that was just optics for electoral purposes. That's all. So if you're a Ghanaian listening to this uh, promise by the minister, I would urge you to take it with extreme caution, lest you be disappointed. Because if the head of government, the president himself, could not fulfill his word to us a year ago, there's little confidence that we can repose in what the minister is saying. But back to the vaccine matter, mm. this thing has been most untidy. It has been most untidy. What I suspect is that there's an effort to sweep it under the carpet in the hope that it will die a natural death. It will not die a natural death. So the earlier those responsible for this own up and engage 
the Ghanaian public and tell us what the facts are, the better. This matter won't die. If there has been wrongdoing, the members of the Ghanaian public would expect action to be taken. The president should also stop adopting the attitude that if he does not comment about a matter, it will die. <laughs> that is not what Felix. the president does. You must embrace oh, responsibility. <laughs> you see, he, right like you said, communications advisors will advise to stay out of it. But you see, it goes beyond strategy. We are talking about the lives and resources of the people. If there is indication that it has been misused in any way, you have a responsibility to take action. So he should man up and own what is happening and supervise the right things that have to be done. He should not seek solace behind the walls of the flash towers and hope that the sorry, Jubilee House and hope that the matter will die. He has done that one too many times. He is in the second term. There is no third term for him. He has to leave a legacy. There must not be a disconnect between what he says and what he does. I think we've had enough of that. Yeah, he so, thank you for your advice. Yes, no. <laughs> look, look, you know, you see, Mr. Baho can be cynical about it. <laughs> it is okay. But ultimately, when his story comes to be written as president, it will be noted. You don't, you don't want the president to thank you for your advice. No, 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 no. You see, it is not, it is not a laughing matter. These are very serious matters. And when you see, there's accountability. I want a ride on the plane. Randy. <laughs> Today, they may evade justice because they are in power. But they cannot guarantee that permanently they will be shielded. So it is important that whatever mess there is, is addressed. The president used to face us on a weekly basis. He gave people the impression that he was committed to this matter. Oh, it, it wasn't weekly. It got well, to periodically. Let's say periodically. Oh, okay. periodically. But, 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 but Kweku, Kweku, the Kweku, silence does not help. Look, um, yesterday I, I, I painted this scenario. And, and when we got the COVAX, when we were the first country to receive the COVAX, look, we were told about the president's leadership, how he's appreciated, how he's built a network, how he was able to pull the thing through. It was a live broadcast and all that. Today, we are being told that we cannot reach, get a deal with the president and the prime minister of Russia that we met a deputy head of mission and that we, we, we the minister of health was instructed to write to the foreign ministry in 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 russia it doesn't paint you see it's in sharp contrast what we're speaking about with respect to sputnik is in sharp contrast with how we projected and painted the president and his foreign relations prowess and his standing in the committee of leadership on the globe well Admittedly, you have a point. I think the president spoke not too long ago, recently, mm. in indicating that we've had challenges with the procurement of vaccines. I'm not sure whether you yes, heard it. Yes. Just a few days ago. Yes. yes, about difficulties and things. Let's ask ourselves what may be the challenges. For example, with the COVAX thing, uh -huh. there's been a delay mm. in the release because of the Indian situation. Fantastic. And all that. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. has been explained. Yes. So you cannot say that that is for want of trying. Mm -hmm. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. But, but I, when, I, you, when in the COVAX situation, you have a situation where middlemen who are not even accredited agents mm -hmm. are telling you that we can give you millions. Mm -hmm. You have a situation where other foreign, other African countries mm -hmm. secured, are securing yeah. deals with the F whatever and are At getting... Much cheaper rates. Yeah. Yes, and are getting it into your country. And your Ministry of Health is telling you that we've not been able to secure anything. You, you know, I, 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 last week I said it. I was disappointed mm. with the government-to-government -government relationship mm. not succeeding. Mm. It, it did because I was surprised. Apart from being disappointed, I was surprised. I thought that rather should have been the option that should work out correctly, considering our relationship with the Russians. We may need more information. For instance, you see, in order for credibility and integrity to stand tall, mm. the Minister of Health may have to provide documentary evidence. Yeah. Look, having contacts with the Russian embassy is documented. documented. Yeah. Okay. Contact with the Russian government it will be is written. documented. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you one lead, just yeah. one small lead. Sure. There's a letter which is dated the 29th of April. Mm -hmm. It was sent by dispatch mm -hmm. in Korea to? to the Russian embassy. Ah. Are you sure about this? Yes. So our foreign ministry so could not have invited you. Just as a lead, I've given you <laughs> to inform them that the FDA has approved Sputnik 
Are you sure? And, and we, we will be interested. Well, Randy, are you really sure? Randy, I'm oh, also hearing. I've just given you a lead. Just Randy, Randy, sure for Randy, Randy, and I'm also hearing. <laughs> I'm also hearing. And I'm just giving you a lead. It's a letter from the Ministry of Health with a covering letter from the Foreign Ministry to the Russian Embassy. And it was sent by... That's uh, not uh, the way to Randy, I'm also hearing. issues like this. Randy, I'm also hearing, and you can verify, it's not that the indeed, to contrary it. to the claim that the, it was a sheikh who approached us mm. in the matter of the purchase of the Sputnik, mm. there's actually proof mm. that we actually wrote Is it in a contract? Yes. Is it a contract? So that too will be an inaccurate claim in the Ministry. So the whole approach has been very, very shorty. It's marks of disrespect for the people. And the president must take charge of the situation and answer for why things are how they are. But there will be a day of accountability All right. for those who think they can evade it now. Gentlemen, it's time to take a shower. Absolutely. Yeah, it's time Absolutely. To take nothing a wrong with that. <laughs> it's time to take a shower. <laughs> Thanks for being a part of the show. God willing, we'll be with you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Metro TV, insightful and inspiring moments.